coming like a geezer. Everybody, it's time for your favorite show on the internet, Gray Beards Studio. I am one of your four hosts for this wonderful program, and uh, we're going to blame uh, our own Kelsey Shannon for uh, our topic uh, today, which is Rob Liefeld characters. Uh, but you know, looking back on it, he did create quite a few interesting characters back in the '90s. So we'll be taking a little time machine trip back to those. Uh, early to mid 90s days and uh, when most of you guys were young and I was still fairly old. Uh, but anyway, let's bring in the uh, the cast of characters that will be joining us uh, today. Uh, first off here, if I can get my, why is my, uh, I, everything is not functioning on my, uh, my computer today. There we go. All right, uh, let's bring in Gary Martin. First of all, uh, Gary Blackline Martin is here. Hey, Gary. Oh, oh baby <laughs> ah that's kind of the book that everybody wants to have right now that just uh that just came out did you just get that in the mail i assume yep yeah. got it cool. yesterday check this out what the... there's a bunch of the these fold outs oh, look at this. There's i don't think i've ever seen that before yeah there's there's a whole bunch of covers in here that I that I've never seen, and and I claim to be a golden aficionado. Hmm. So you're saying it's well worth the purchase? It's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, let's uh, let's see what Kelsey uh, Sasquatch has to say about any of this. Uh, hey, Kelsey, what do you? Mm. Oh God! Why don't you warn a guy? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> you see nothing. Now you saw nothing there. <laughs> Once again, <laughs> last Newton is uh, he's like, no, you've seen nothing here. <laughs> mm. Just Probably a little study. I yeah, so that's uh, yeah. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's see what uh, David Williams has to offer to this uh, today. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a party at David's house. <laughs> oh, everybody's we got everybody's got Michael Golden here. I know I don't. Loser. We I, well, <laughs> I've got golden books. I just have to actually go pick them out of the. Um, uh, the we book have to clean phone. our palettes to get ready for Liefeld. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, notice nobody had any Liefeld out uh, ready oh, to go. Everybody I, had the golden. And that was not I, planned. I was doing the golden thing, and then Jerry pulls out that book. And then Jerry, nobody planned that. No. That's just there, golden fans happening live. Clearly, <laughs> I didn't plan it because I wasn't in on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you didn't get the email? Oh, sh crap. Oh. Sorry. Yeah. Well, that's okay. You don't have to tell me everything. In fact, you don't have to tell me anything. So. Uh, let's take a moment here, guys, and see who's in the chat before we get rolling. Uh, Schism was the first one here today, uh, followed by Holder, 6480. Leg Kick, of course, Leg Kick is here because he's almost always here. Past Master Dan is here. Red Sands of Mars, obviously a John Carter fan. Um, Blackjack is here. Um, you are fan. Jack. Uh, let's see. He says, Ahoy, Greybeard's. Dang it, the pressure to be clever is too much for me. Best show on the internet. Thank you so much. Oh, look, Shelly Lopresti's here. To my favorite guys, wait, I love the bros too. I don't want to get in trouble. My favorite is that sexy Lopez guy, though. I'm trying to think of who she's referring to. Look who's being clever now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she also had a great line right after that. Will they be feet drawn? Yeah, <laughs> Will they be feet drawn today? You must watch to find out. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> 
Hey, there's Creative Faye. Um, oh, look at that. She knows stuff that I don't know. She says, hi, Grace. How are you all today? Happy belated birthday to Kelsey. Oh, thanks. Yeah, happy birthday to you, too. It was my birthday, too. Happy yeah, birthday. Was- Happy birthday, Kelsey. Yeah, happy birthday, uh, David. Uh, yeah, happy birthday, Aaron. Happy birthday, Gary. Yeah. Everybody's birthday. Mine's, mine's coming up in about six months. So, oh, no. I'll remember you that. Get it now. Something. You don't get it. That's then. right. That way, if you forget, I'm covered. So, seriously, how long ago was your birthday? It's November. <laughs> yeah. so, KSS, KSS uh, wishes everybody happy birthday. So, it's I, all I, of our I, birthdays. I don't mine, know. Mine was August 12th. Okay, well, that see, that's oh, that's very oh wow. Well, thanks yeah. for sharing, David. Oh, well, Jeez, happy birthday! <laughs> happy birthday! A little bit belated. Did you go to a rave or anything on your birthday? What did you get oh, yourself, right. David? Uh, nothing. <laughs> it was a nice quiet day. Oh, well, that, nice. sometimes that's a present in and of itself. Yeah, that is very true. Very blessed. Thank you for everybody who says happy birthday. I appreciate it. Thank you. Mark Pendren is here. Uh, he says, if this was a contest and it's not, Aaron would win because we saw on Saturday night he already drew X-Force parody pages for Marvel. That's right. I'm just going to get those out what? and we'll use those. Oh, you got to have to show but later. We'll, we'll get to that later. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, right when I'm drawing, you go, hey, can you get those pages out? Uh, Genuine Comics is here. How about that? And here it is. Uh, you're gonna have to say it for me, Kelsey. Biblio Bob, is that right? Biblio. <laughs> Bibli Bob. Bibli Bibli Bob. Bob. <laughs> <laughs> you, you keep putting the O in there. Biblio Bob. I don't understand. Why Biology I can't Bob. Say it. Bible Bob. Do <laughs> <laughs> it. Um, Joseph Dredd is here. Marcus Killiger, of course, the uh, purveyor of all pop culture knowledge. Dan, the pizza man. Genovese. Toshiro is here. Time for the greatest draw stream known to man. Thank you. Brian Rubenacher is here. I got that right. Levi Skeen is here. Squibs for $1.99. Look at that. We have Super Chat already. Howdy, wow. Great the best, the best CG show. Thank you so much, Squibs. We appreciate it very much. Uh, let's see. Simpson Ronan is here. Uh, so he says, does this mean tiny heads, questionable anatomy, and poorly realized or missing feet? Yes. And, lot, and lots of teeth. Lots, lots and of lots teeth. of teeth. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Uh, Ronan's here, uh, not Citizen Ronan. There's Ronan and Citizen Ronan. So there's a uh, so battle is, of the uh, Ronan illegal. Yeah, one of them is uh, a friend of the state, and one of them is not. I guess <laughs> there's a Citizen oh, Ronan right? and then a regular Ronan. <laughs> Mike McMahon says Aaron should draw Die Hard, Kelsey should draw Blood Wolf, and Dave should draw Bad Rock. Um, Close. I, I don't. Yeah, I don't know who Die Hard is, but I may be the one drawing Bad Rock. Uh, Robert the Bruce is here. Uh, Splat Bag is here. He's always fun. Uh, Ruby <laughs> yeah, K90 yeah. is here. Henry Bemis all the way from Oregon. Uh, Jay Styler. Jay Styler is here. Um, Prater 7. Who else we got? So I'm rolling through this rather quickly because I know you guys are very anxious for us to quit talking and start drawing. You made that clear last week. <laughs> Gray Wolf Graphics is here. Jetto Jaga. J Dollar Sign. How about that? Playmail says, I wasn't even born yet in the 90s. Jeez, get out of here. What? Uh, Hendon Schnelli is here. Uh, let's see. Bill Wiest, You Scared Jody is back. J Dollar Sign. You already said. What's that? Now you're repeating yourself. Am I? Have I said Christina Lynn? No, I haven't. So there. No. Christina well, you could say go ahead and say hers twice. Christina Lynn, Christina Lynn, Christina Lynn. Is that like uh, no place like home? Yes. Like, <laughs> yeah. Transported to Oz now. Uh, John Burroughs. Uh, stanza. <laughs> Keep repeating it. Pain, low life. That's right. Uh, Angela Curry, Richie Cyberdoop, um, Dad's Den of Pop Culture. Well, let's see. I think we've just about got everybody. <sighs> Wow, there's a lot of people commenting today. I keep rolling and just keep on coming. Um, oh, Corin Zenth, all the way from Australia. Thank you for the $5, man. He was very generous to me on uh, my Sunday show. And here he is nice. back with more Super Chats. Thank you so much. Can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Love this show. Thank you. Because he's uh, probably pulling a giant lizard out of his backyard while he's... Uh, 
Um, Eric it won't be too long, it. Aaron. That huh? it won't be too long that the entire show you'll just be reading who's watching, and then yeah. you know, the two hours will go by, and that hey, you know, you the want to feel like they're being See you next week. Uh, Squibs for dollar ninety nine. Will anyone draw Blood Wolf? Uh, that is uh, that's top. Ooh. Hang on a second here. Um, okay, so we are doing uh, life old characters. Now those could be that could be Deadpool. It could be Cable. It could be any of the Marvel characters you created or stuff he did for uh, his own studio. Um, as we're getting ready to do this, and Kelsey looks like he's got his uh, Michael Golden swipe file out. Um, yeah, I'm getting ready for the Rob Liefeld challenge by looking at a lot of Michael Golden. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't really make sense, but I don't care. As we prepare ourselves for this journey, I would appreciate if you guys would hit the like and subscribe button so we can grow this channel and uh, make it the, uh, the phenomena that it should be. Kelsey so, does uh, what I do. I would go buy these books and just take the covers and... Put yeah, I mean, sorry, uh, Tom yeah. Lyle and Andrew Propoy, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I used uh, to do the same thing, just <laughs> cut off the cover and throw the comic book away. That Punisher War Journal is one, and that is a great cover. I used that in the class I was teaching as an example of just an incredible dynamic layout and cover design. Oh, it's amazing. And it's wasn't color. He, a lot wasn't of my he color doing, comes from this. Wasn't he doing those and the Batman at the same time? Uh, maybe, maybe. I got those in there too. Oh, I love this one. Look at That's this. That's a great one too, right there. Freaking insane. He's got like you can see the the bolts on the. Uh, look at this. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's just crazy. That is nuts. That's, yeah. Oh, wait, yeah. is this a yeah. Lee Golden show or a Rob Liefeld show? I can't remember. <laughs> in the artist edition and in all their you know full. Oh really? Stories. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna have to get this book. Oh, here they are, Detective. Mm. Oh, you know, I do I the same thing. I've got all these covers in a notebook, just what? like you do. I, I cut all the covers off and put them in a notebook. That, this used to be a thing. Um, I don't know. I haven't heard of anybody doing it recently. I even I have like several copies of this. It's it's almost Christmas pointless thing. to do it, you know, now because they come out with books like what Gary uh, just right. purchased. Exactly. I mean, th this used to be like hard to get a hold of all this stuff. It's in that here, Christmas so. story was awesome. Oh. Look at this. Hold on. I don't even know if I got room for this. This is a rare one. Um, let me zoom out. I remember that. I got that. Yeah. King Arthur. I re vaguely remember this. I didn't yeah. know they went together, though. Look at yeah, that. look at that. That's mm -hmm. sweet. Do you have any of uh, the stuff he did for continuity, the Neil Adams Studios? Um, Bucky yeah, not, not in this book, but I do have those. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah, Classic. he did advertisements and, and a bunch of stuff that, that never came out. Yeah, I got it. And there were, he also did on the inside cover, there were black and white uh, a giant image that he did. And you can buy all the covers and rip the cover off and yeah. make a giant Michael Golden black yeah. and white illustration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have all of them. I'm still tracking them down. <laughs> uh, leg Kick for $2. Thank you, Leg Kick. Says, when you start, Aaron, can you get your golden book? <laughs> 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 Kelsey's doing clutch cargo there. Here's the church. Here's, here's the, the steeple. How does that go? Oh, open yeah. the door and here's all the people. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> all right, so let's go a little round of show and tell here, and then we'll get uh, we'll get rolling with the acrobatics of the show. Uh, Gary, what have you got for us today? I see him on display. As long as we're talking about golden, oh, <laughs> please. I have this poster in black and white. Yeah, so not that great. one. No, this one I got in black and white. It's a full yeah, twenty-two it's, it's by big. something poster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. I have that too. And and that's this is my recreation of that. Oh, you kidding? Oh, yeah, you look really cool. that's why I said not this one. <laughs> yeah, not this one. Oh, man. See my little. I don't know if you can see it. Oh God, you nailed it. Oh, did you add your signature it's, to? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> it's almost like the grass. Like it fits but in with is, the grass. Yeah. Wow, That's man. the first time I realized just, I always knew Golden was insane. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but in the best way. Stuff, I mean, it, like haloing everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. like there's a halo around this gun, which is not whiteout. No. 
he just inked up to something. You know, see yeah. like this white line under this bag. It's around everything. You see the leg. I mean, it's and it it it's a subtle way to pop things forward and also to create movement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, in yeah. in his Nam stories, a lot of like especially uh was it called first through the fifth or fifth through the first, I can't remember. Oh, uh, the one he the black and white ones in Savage Tales. He oh, would yeah. halo yeah. leaves on trees and you know, I mean, <laughs> crazy stuff. So um Anyway, this is a recreation. I did it big. It's like 16 oh, by 20 or whatever. I like how people ask, like, uh, you know, why do you take so long? And he's like, for the stuff I do, it's uh, I'm actually pretty fast. <laughs> and I've been doing some military covers. Here's one wow. that it's, it's uh, a portrait of one, one of the project oh, managers. The and yeah. managers. And I, I'm doing a lot of golden isms, in the, you know, especially in the gear. And I realized today this this guy kind of looks like Graham Nolan. <laughs> he does. <laughs> it's like a cross between Graham Nolan and Art T Bear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, has, he has these insane Marvel and DC tattoos on both arms. <laughs> and, you know, so he's apparently that's a military uh, um, thing that those a lot of those guys are are heavily. In the comics. Oh yeah, I used to send uh, comics to my uh, marine buddies, just big stacks of whatever I could find. They couldn't get enough of them. And this one, yeah. especially, is is golden influence. Yeah. But here's another uh, project manager cover, and again, all the the crazy gear. Mm -hmm. And and golden always made this stuff look real, and so that's what I was trying to do. Is like you have to reference it like crazy to to get all that yeah if you're gonna do it especially for guys that's important to you you're gonna have to get it right yeah they know <laughs> yeah you can't fake it with them you can't mark he does look like Dan DeVito. that's like hilarious so. <laughs> mark penguin says he looks like dan didio actually more yeah, than he does <laughs> yeah, a little bit of everything it's like a warshack test Oh, he's going uh, back to reading his big book of Michael Golden. Yeah, he doesn't want to downshift into uh, Liefeld. How no. much is that? Eleven by seventeen or bigger? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it seems even bigger. God, I wasn't going to get that book, but I kind of feel like, like now I have to get that. Yeah, book. yeah I got to get it. I wasn't. Yeah, there's either. a lot of really cool stuff in it. Mm -hmm. Is Else? it? It's only Marvel stuff, though, right? Yeah, I cut way back on my. Artist edition purchases. I have over twenty, and I haven't purchased one in a couple of years. Mm. Every time I get one, I say this is the last time I'm getting one. Yeah, <laughs> same. So now I got to get this Michael Golden one, and it's going to be the last time I get. Yeah, one. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. This is the this is the first one I've I purchased in a couple of years, but I probably I have about twenty five of them. I got the Rocketeer one, and I've got. Um, oh, man, I missed and I've that got, one. Uh, that was like the very first one they did. The yeah. Sequence one, and then I've got the John Buscema Silver Surfer, and I've got the Wrightson, and I think those are the only three that I've got. I got the uh, the uh, Walt Simonson um, four, uh, yeah. four, and then the Jim Lee uh, X Men one, and then the uh, uh, Daredevil uh, Born Again, which is awesome. The best one that I've seen out of you know the dozens that have been published from even different companies is the prince valiant one the Ooh. hal foster prince valiant one that fantagraphics published. it must be huge it is it's twice as big as a regular <laughs> book plus there are fold outs that are even like 18 by 24. i mean it's oh, it's insane. insanely cool i want to draw big. Cool. So you guys are <laughs> look at this when do I get to draw big? Oh, I want this. Thing. I actually think this is probably better than the Prince Valiant one, even though he's not a better artist. I think this one is because it it does like the, the size, and you get to see all the whiteout stuff. But oh. it'll have things like overlays. Ooh. You know, oh, yeah. here's his like pencil ink that's thing. what he drew <laughs> yeah the kelly, yeah the kelly jones uh, the kelly jones batman book that uh, <laughs> uh forget who published it uh has has those kinds of bells and whistles too uh john's in the in the chat saying so liefeld 
<laughs> we get, we're getting too far off topic, I think. Yeah, the one that John inked that that made that book. That's why I bought it is because I wanted to see his inks, and he yeah. he did not compromise. But I, I only have one thing to say about your your choice there, David. Uh, <laughs> I said uh, not better quality art. So I, I put David, a caveat since, uh, there. Hey, we sent you have the screen. You want to uh, do a little show and tell here real quick? Gary's version of the camera. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what do I got new? It's not that. Not that. These things that are oh, show off. Still, still <laughs> available. Yeah. But this, oh, here's the latest. Whoa. Man, that's great. So that's what the you oh. finished it off from last week. Oh, she looks like I my love aunt. The unfettered joy in her face. She looks like my aunt. <laughs> Is your aunt that, dressed like that? That's a <laughs> handsome woman right there. That's <laughs> <laughs> yep. Why do women take that as an insult when men call women handsome? Not they don't uh, anymore because half the women are men. So uh, it's yeah. Yeah. Hey, hang on. So let's take a poll, a poll in the chat of, of all the women. If if you're referred to as a handsome woman, do you take offense to that? That's like a Western phrase, isn't it? Like they. No, I've that. said that before, and I always regret it. But but I mean it as a compliment. Well, see, that's a handsome woman. So there you go. What can you say? I mean, you know. It's better than saying you're an ugly woman, answer. right? <laughs> Paulus Art says, can I have your aunt's number, Kelsey? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's all mine. Oh, damn. Well, <laughs> that's not the way that was supposed to come out. <laughs> See, that's what happens in the body. <laughs> all right, well, that turned out great, David. Now, yeah. you, who did you, is that black or gray back there in the... Uh, it's gray. Yeah, and so you painted all that, and this is all gouache? Uh, a little watercolor and gouache, and yeah, is that's that, it. So that gray is all gouache then, too? Yes. Mm. Okay. Mm. What about the other one? You had another oh, one. Oh, this right? is actually, um, the, the red is that ink, the ink. Ah. So you're just mixing and matching. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not bad. <laughs> uh, Richie Cyberdupe says Janeway was a handsome woman. There you, that, go. There you go. That yeah, perfect example for you. She classifies that. as a handsome right. woman. Yeah. Okay, Kelsey, what have you got? I got uh, the the winner of last week. I'm a little oh, late. Look uh, at that. There you go. Jeez. <laughs> it came last, out. How come you're always the winner of last week? <laughs> it's like you're you're always like this week is winner for last week. We, we well, never... sometimes it's uh, David's. He'll show up like a month later. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Gross, Here's this. <laughs> nah, this is, um, you know, I just needed, uh, what, 10 more minutes or so? But you you were like, no, nah, I see where this is going. Let me shut this down right now. I'm like, okay, them's the rules, I guess. 10 hours, you know, who's counting, right? <laughs> no, nah, I just finished this up this morning, actually. But it was, it was way easier than I thought because it was just darkening up the background. And then uh, do I did gouache on uh, you know to make this like gray and that like purple and the red and uh, his white and then that was it didn't you know came together really easy actually you know you but won. you know I'm me you know it's one of my things I do yeah. things easy I, I don't you think like... you won my friend oh no 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 because uh, you did the costume wrong oh, oh, oh. here we go the cape. <laughs> the cape. Oh, because it's supposed to be black on the other side. Uh, artistic license, my friend. Artistic nah, license. Nah, nah, nah. nah. <laughs> oh well, then I want to see your Liefeld drawing today in the exact style of Mr. Liefeld, or you're disqualified, <laughs> sir. That's right. Uh, it's just, uh, it's just Kelsey's. Uh, what should we say? Um, clever use of red, or uh, <laughs> yeah, that's where I was, that's where I'm going. It's a cheat. So no. Hey, no. Go Go back to mine. Look at how much this. Look how much red I put into mine. Yeah, I mean, just a giant red dot behind that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, oh, and the pow. Okay. Yeah. And those red lips. 
Okay. Well, at least mine's part of the costume. You know, I if only yellow purple did. It. <laughs> if it were a costume, is this what you guys are arguing about? <laughs> yeah, red. Hey, don't. Hey, what size is yours? Who used huh? the most red? What size I is use, yours? I use red legitimately. Hey, it's big enough. All right. <laughs> now we're comparing sizes. Jeez. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to show what I did last week because it. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, only, only John. Uh, yeah, David. Uh, yeah, that's you have it. That's not the first time you've done that. I yeah. can't even get it in the screen. What do you mean? Look. <laughs> now, Aaron, only show yours if there's red in it. I don't have any red. I, well, not really. No. It's not too late. Shelly just dropped in. Thanks for the uh, thanks for the chat. It would have been nicer if they'd been super chats, but that's okay. I think that the uh, just you know. Last time I did super chat. Yeah. Oh, don't don't be sending us money. Oh. I sent you money, but then YouTube gets it. That's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You would you would come out less on that deal. Just came over and gave me five dollars. Right. Said, oh, five dollars. That's right. All right, all right, guys. Now I'm going to show you the real. Uh, if if it was a competition, which it clearly is not, uh, <laughs> might have been you know come out on top last week. I don't know. Well, oh, you colored it. Woohoo! Yeah. yeah, nice. Why don't you show Venom down there at her feet? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, look at him. <laughs> the symbiote meets uh Catwoman. Hey, well, I'll, you know, as you guys mock me i'll have you know that i did sell this so. <laughs> Ooh, wow. okay oh it's fantastic come on just not it's the winner <laughs> yeah, well aaron has a point that it really doesn't matter what we think if he oh, sells sorry. it he's Shut the winner. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, true. If, you, if you sell it then then you've clearly won so this is this is not available for the auction. I see. No, okay. It's gone. Yeah. It's gone. All right. I, I thought I had a shot, but for show though. Um, as I'm finishing up my Wraith of God campaign, I um, I'm I'm getting ready to launch uh, the Kit Carter graphic novel, and I had to come up with an alien villain. Um, <laughs> so I was working on the old sketchbook here the other day, and uh, came up <laughs> that's with this guy. And then I had to come up with a helmet, so I worked on it a little bit longer. Oh, that's, that's cool. This is awesome. Wow. That's very cool. Samurai influence, you know. and uh, Yeah, that guy looks better with, with a smaller jaw than, than the first one. It has a uh, like a fun kind of beta ray bill quality to yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I noticed that in this. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't going for that, but it did kind of show in this. And I was like, well, you know what? I'll, Reminds you know, me of uh, Wizzle. Simonson, why not? So, keep it. I love great. it. Yeah. Yeah. So there's my uh, there's my villain, and then I've got um, where's the other one here? Um, that's a blank. Man, okay. you're full of it. Jeez. Okay. What else we got? Oh, here it is. Okay. Uh, this oh. was. I have to do a. Uh, you remember the old Marvel value stamps that used to be in the books in the seventies, like on the bulletin page of the old Marvel comics? Hmm. Gary certainly remembers. Yep. Mm. And they'd always say clip them and collect them, right? And yeah, I this, thought they were insane. It's like what? Yeah, you expect me to cut that out. Yeah, that, that's why you got to be careful when you're buying uh, '70s comics because somebody might have clipped the old uh, stamp out. But I'm doing these in the back of my books, and so last time on the bulletin page, I had um, one of my characters, Eon Chance, was the first uh, collector stamp and this is going to be the second one that's going to appear in blood hunters on the bulletin page oh man that's great i love old west spawn there's, hey, there's now. two <laughs> things that really no. impressed me on this two things that really impressed me one is the masterful use of cross hatching and splatter mm -hmm. oh yeah that's, yeah good. and then that bottom angle of the colt how did you get that well, I've got uh, I've got a, a replica. Okay, Shelly's pointing a gun at him. He sketched yeah. it out real quick. <laughs> well, I was laying on the floor, and she's pointing the gun. I looked up and went, "Hey, that's what it looks like." Because that's here. not something a photo you could find, you know. <laughs> well, I actually bought the. Uh, I do have a uh, revolver over there that I bought. Okay. Uh, I 
this is a real great uh, yeah that's that's a very cool piece yeah. so anyway thank you guys so anyway i i inked that pencil inked it and colored it yesterday so digitally of course so there you go that's what we're up to all right guys um without oh you know what i want to do before we start finally going? oh okay no, 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 no. All right, all right. Uh, we all have campaigns, and I, I am negligent about going through these real quick. So I'm going to do this real quickly, and then we'll get drawing. Um, you'll find the links to everybody's campaigns in the description of this video. So you can go and visit back, um, check them out, whatever, um, as you see fit. But um, mine, of course, is... Of course. Is first. Uh, <laughs> Wraith of God Blood Hunters. This is available right now. I am done with the book. The black and white work is done. I am. I got eight pages to color on Kit Carter, and lettering is being done right now. So uh, we're very close to being finished. So just be a few more weeks before it goes to the printer. So you want to get in there and back if you haven't already. And appreciate everybody that's been supporting this project. And uh, so there you go. Um, we also have Kelsey Shannon has a book that uh, he calls Scribbles. We'll call it the same thing. Uh, <laughs> there it is right there. Almost at 20 grand. Look at that. Yay. Nice. Awesome. Go ahead and give us your uh, your Reader's Digest pitch here. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, this is the, the uh, collection of art that you don't see, the art before the art. It's all the sketches and layouts and designs that go into making pages and art and the things that you love. There's a whole stage before that that's hidden away in a drawer. So I shoved it all in a book just for you. For the uh, process junkie out there who loves to see the behind the scenes, this is the book. Scribbles. All right. A lot of my uh, sketches are better than the finished product. It, it, yeah. You lose something. For me, I lose something when I'm, you, you lose know, that energy. It, that you're so, of, you know, seeing that kind of work. Is, is, is really a treat. I mean, oh, I'm, looking, I'm look, looking forward to it. Uh, mm. Gary's got a book called uh, Brush with Destiny. It's an art book. It's his ink art book, as he uh, calls it. Go ahead, Gary. This is your it's, sign up. Yeah, coming out soon. Uh, we're talking about launching it. The, we haven't nailed a date down yet, but it's it's imminent. Imminent. That sounds dangerous. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a threat, Gary? Yep. It's coming <laughs> and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> oh, this is fantastic. You man your hatches and uh, there you go. And then, of course, um, yeah, let's see what else we got here. We've got, uh, where is it? There it is. What is it this time? Well, it's got to be. Uh, it's got to be David Williams' uh, artwork in Bass oh. Rage, Best of Hell, of course. Uh, Beautiful. Coming from Allegiance Art. And uh, how much longer is this going? Are they wrapping this up soon? Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's right here. Oh, man. This is going to be great. Looking forward to um, it. You also can also get uh, Norris Saga on this, by the way. Be sure to pick up that uh, and, you know, have an extra with uh, Bass Reeves. Yeah, that's right. You know, get Norris Saga, and if you want, you can add Bass Reeves on. To it. <laughs> else is um, so anyway, that's on. Uh, two of these are on, all these are on Indiegogo, except Kelsey's, which is on Fund My Comic. But again, the uh, the links for these campaigns are in the description of this video. So there you have it. Mm. Good times. And that's it, huh? All right, I've got, uh, let's see, Squibs for $1.99. Thank you, Squibs. says, John, get in there and show him how it's done. John isn't old enough to be on this show. They say he's got great eyebrows. Oh, but he's got them covered with his hat, though. So we Who says know. that? Now, I would be up for the challenge because Liefeld is John Malin's jam. But... You know, I know that you don't like the competition, Aaron. I know this what? is not a competition. <laughs> Whoa, it's not a competition. Hang on. Yeah. I, don't I don't know. I don't know. Is it too are late you, to have Kelsey, an addition? Are you, are you extending a, uh, an invitation? Is that what you're doing? I mean, if John wants to come in here and do this, I can't think of anybody better to be guest on a Rob Liefeld episode. But he'll probably draw uh, a wiener. 
a dick on a horse, uh, yeah, with a yeah. sharpie. <laughs> but yeah. if he wants to give it a real shot to like top us in the Liefeld game, I can't think of anybody to do it better. Uh, he's John he says, says no thanks. <laughs> um, uh, it's all right. Uh, you know, Aaron was scared too, uh, but he got over that. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, what are we doing? Well, okay. Um, where did my paper go? I guess I can't draw. I can't find my paper. I'm going to yeah, do who's, who's I'm going going Bad Rock. I've actually got an idea for Bad Rock, and I'm going to do it. So there. Bad Rock. Yeah. Are you going to do it in a Liefeld style, or are you going to try to reimagine Bad Rock as you would see it? I Well, I'm not a, uh, I'm not a copycat. I'll bring my own uh, juice to it and uh, my own flavor, you know. <laughs> yeah, just just keep the juice to yourself. You nailed that one, Kelsey. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are you doing, David? Uh, I think at first I was going to do uh, uh, who did I say from Rob's? <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. I can't remember. Who was it? Well, I settled on I right. settled on cable, but yeah, but I was gonna do that Rob character, um, Profit. Profit, yeah. But oh. I changed my mind. So you're gonna do cable. Okay. You are gonna do cable. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. I think that's a good one. Uh, I of course am gonna do Blood Wolf. Because I of saw course. that in the chat and I was like, oh, that might be the way to go. I might do some Blood Wolf. I like going for the obscure ones. Well, is it is that any more obscure than <laughs> the other ones? Well, I mean, it's, it's maybe to you. <laughs> I don't know. Blood Wolf, Blood Wolf uh, rocked, man. It was good. Oh, look at this, look at this. He had a gun that he could ride on, like yeah, a motorcycle. Yeah, yeah, he had a cool gun. <laughs> um, we got a problem here in the chat already. Oh, oh someone's getting a cannonball. Oh, uh, oh. Pressing, not a copycat, really, Mr. Wrightson. Oh, uh, really, Mr. Cannonball. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> you know, Aaron is as uh explained to me many times there's there's a fine line between swiping and, and a homage. <laughs> and we are doing homage being studios, inspired so by and what 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 is the well, well I, I don't think we know what that no 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 is. whatever I do is an homage. Okay? Oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron defines the homage. There you go. All right, I gotta find some bad rock reference. All right, so, is there any do. drawing going on? Hey, I'm getting I'm getting my reference right. I'll be done yeah. in a second. We're all kind of referencing up here. Um, <laughs> as as we reference up, I have to say, my daughter wanted to go see. Um, there's like a special release of Coraline. Uh, the stop motion film from what yeah. 15 years ago or eight years, 10 years ago, whatever it was. Pretty good. Um, yeah. That Leica did. They're out, their studios are out here. Used to be Will Vinton, of course. And um, so we went and saw that last night. And uh, wow, really weird. Yeah, that's uh, Neil Gaiman, right? Wrote that. That's an interesting. I didn't. I don't know. Did he? Yeah, Neil Gaiman, Neil Gaiman wrote that. Oh, did yeah. That's, that? that's where all that weirdness comes from. <laughs> well, no, hang on a second. No, 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 because the uh, the screenplay was actually credited to uh, Henry um, Selnick, who did uh, Nightmare Before Christmas and yeah, James Henry Selnick. Yeah, I don't know. I don't he know. directed it and did the screenplay according to the credits. I don't know if Gaiman had something to do with it or not. <clears throat> Maybe it's like his original story. Possibly. And Selick did the. Uh... Okay, I don't know. you guys, I'm finding Bad Rock with. Uh, like he has shoulder pads and not shoulder pads, so I don't know what's. Uh, yeah, why would he need shoulder pads? That's an excellent question, but just like putting shoulder pads on the thing. If you don't put shoulder pads, it's not a Rob Life right. character. Right, so. that's right. true. Okay, all right, I'll go with the shoulder pads then. And Bad Rock has lots of guns and pouches. Yeah, and, uh, oh, he does it. Yeah, a lot it's of pouches, a... Aaron. Oh, he doesn't. I'm looking at him right now. Here's a picture of him in overalls. Hmm. So I guess he's. Uh, 
That's an off time. No, look, if you look at the Bad Rock annual number one, he doesn't even have uh, shoulder pads. He has a new outfit. So I don't know. I'm confused. Hey, Gary. Like, didn't we, that's Gary, cool. Didn't we, do, didn't we do some uh, Bad Rock stuff for Rob? Yeah, we did trading cards and what else? We did that poster. Yeah. Wait. A couple of posters. This work. Yeah. And you also did Glory. Whatever, what was it? Supreme Glory Days. Yeah, Supreme Glory Days. I remember that, David. I remember you doing that. That Supreme thing. I loved it. I, I always bring that up, and he's like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> That was cool. Yeah. I no, it. it was kind of a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> what, the experience? Or there was the... a lot yeah. of politics. Yeah. Just leave it at that. That was politics. unnecessary drama. Yeah. <laughs> what else is new yeah i mean that's i've heard that a lot from like the liefeld thing you know where there's people that still have uh issues with like business practice and stuff like that so like i don't know whatever i'm sure there were a lot of issues but just from from a fan perspective uh and when i was coming in this stuff was like I don't know that I knew that it was bad. You know how everybody was talking about it being bad? I, I don't know that I saw that and it was just freaking cool, you know? Well, when uh, you're when you're trying to get into comics and you're a neo pro, you don't really listen to that kind of stuff because your your enthusiasm, you know, outweighs your, your logic. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. So yeah. <laughs> and so you don't want to you don't want, you know, what? Stan Lee's going to rip me off. Oh, I, you know, hogwash, you know. You... <laughs> Stan would never do that. No, nah, he would never do that. <laughs> what about um what do you think about uh here's something that kind of goes around about Liefeld and about his popularity and uh, I mean, I'm sure some of it, I'm sure a lot of it was him being on TV show uh, on uh the late night you know, or, or Tonight Show, or what was he on, Letterman? He showed up on uh, No, it was Dennis Miller. Oh, it was Miller? Okay, so it wasn't one of the really big ones. Okay, I get it. But he was on that Buttonfly Jeans commercial. That's like the first time I realized, like, people drew comics. But when you see it, it has, like, this rawness and this excitement that, that gets your attention. But I've heard it so many times that people say, I felt like I can actually draw that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, well, so see, many other people are impenetrable. A compliment, though. I don't think that's a compliment. Maybe not a compliment for Liefeld, but... But uh, the fans, yeah, I see what you're saying. From their point of view, that's like gave them hope. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, like, oh, well, I see you don't have to draw feet in order to be successful yeah. or whatever. No, I think from a professional point of view, I was had been in comics for a while when those guys were, you know, became popular. And it's like there's two points of view one is the jealousy of their success and i'm sure that had a lot to do with with the criticisms from other professionals but a lot of it is like looking at the work itself and you know like how does he get away with this you know a lot of professionals were like you know kind of snobs about what they were doing and not seeing the big picture well he that. was having fun with it yeah. yeah, and not and not seeing that he was uh, really connecting with his fans in a way that that hadn't been done before. Yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. well, and I think there's you you got to look at it like, you know, he was successful. Like I'm not being so far, but he was successful. At, <laughs> um, <laughs> he was he was successful at uh, creating characters that people or fans really sort of gravitated to and he had that high energy style that very visceral that people responded to immediately and you know it wasn't about oh well who's the best artist in the room or anything like that and that's what when we were all trying to break in you're like everybody felt like oh it's better than rob but it was like well if you're better than rob you'd probably be doing as well as he is you know what i mean and so it's he had elements going for him that most people didn't you know, and Everything. you think a lot of it was right place, right time as well. He was the man for the for that particular moment 
for comics. You could, you could probably argue that for all the a lot of the image guys, maybe not all of them, but a lot of the image right. guys. Right, true that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because I think that there was we had years, and I mean, starting from the early '60s, we had years of basically conventional comic book art, right? And Frank Miller started to kind of push that in the late '80s. Uh, Simonson did a little bit as well, but they still fit within those sort of norms. But then the guys like McFarlane and and um, Liefeld, especially, came along. Jim Lee, who was a better draftsman than those two, but um, they sort of pushed that sort of new style that people hadn't really seen before, and people weren't used to, right? So everybody's kind of like, "Well, this sucks. They can't, you know, the human figure wouldn't do this, and the human figure wouldn't do that." And it's like. Like Gary said, they're kind of missing the point. They were able to tap into something, regardless of you know how you explain it, that was extremely successful. And what do you think it is? It, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just saying. What do you think it is? I think a, a lot of it had to do with with Rob's personality. I mean, yeah. he, he was a, a a salesman, and and you know, in not a Barnum and Bailey type of way, but in a likable type of way. My first brush with him was in the mid to late eighties. I don't remember exactly. He sent me a drawing of his, uh, he commissioned me to ink it. And it was his, you know, his characters. This was before he started working at Marvel. And so he had been doing his characters for a while. And he just wanted me to ink it. And it was like a splash page of, you know, a group shot of his characters. And I talked to him a couple of times on the phone to, to try to get a feel of what he wanted from me. And the guy was so enthusiastic and excited, uh, you know, that that enthusiasm rubbed off on me. Yeah. Um, I mean, he was just, he he loved what he was doing at that time. Rubbed off on you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And it was, you had know, you not met anybody that it was that interesting to like that you're like oh yeah I draw comics it's pretty cool and then you I mean it was there anybody that had anywhere near that kind of enthusiasm no for what they not were that doing? I had ever had ever met anyone that's like really that. sad <laughs> and his his also his father was was a heavy influence in in pushing Rob and trying to get him to become a oh player. so it was like a Tiger Woods thing yeah exactly I don't know how much you know what his father role was but i remember that was it was part of you know he kept referring to his dad and and, and um Here's, his uh, dad was involved in 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 the commissions of him finding other artists to ink rob hmm. and i i accepted the commission i started inking on it decided what i wanted to do what my approach was and i started inking on it and then he said oh by the way jerry ordway has done one of these already i'll send you a <laughs> <laughs> so he mailed me a Xerox of what Jerry Ordway did over Rob. And, and of course, Ordway redrew the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> and it, I didn't see any Rob in it at all. It was all Jerry Ordway. And, of course, you know, it was Ordway. So it was a masterpiece. And, and <laughs> but it was a Liefeld, right? Um, I already, yeah, it was all Liefeld characters. Let me read this real quick. This is Malin's perspective on. He says everyone swam in Rob, Jim, and Todd's wake. Everything else, be everyone else benefited from the right place, right time. That's true. I think that's yeah. I don't think anybody's arguing that. <laughs> well, I mean, also there was um, there was definitely a lot of guys who, yeah, were like you say, swimming in his wake, like uh, everybody from Sam Keith. But Sam Keith was in a in a place of his own. But I think he definitely benefited from the elevating of comics from these core group of guys that really brought the heat so yeah i mean larry stroman was already doing great work i loved it but you know you get him on x factor at the same time jim lee's doing that sylvester's doing wolverine and all that it's like a it was a perfect storm of like amazing stuff all happening yeah. at once well you oh, got could larson have been successful on Spider-Man had McFarlane not come before him and kind of set the table. I don't know. Yeah, that's... I don't think so. I, well, I don't know. I don't know. That's a good point. I mean, I I think it, it, everything was a perfect storm right then. And the thing about Rob, even more so than his art, is that he 
really does love comic books. And when you talk to him on that level, he's a very likable person when you're just talking comics, just like how any of us will just talk comics and we'll go, oh, we like this and this, and it's infectious. And mm -hmm. that's that personality that he, he was able to project that energy out into also a side of the business, not the totality of the business, because then there's that ugly side of the business where you get to see the other side where you go, oh, okay. <laughs> This person yeah. like this, you know, not to indict him for anything. But well, I mean, if you look at any <laughs> successful person, there's you know, yeah. there's you know, always and, and if you stories. if you if you're really in the inside baseball of it, it could almost kind of taint the aspect that you do like of this person. You know what I mean? And if you're just looking at it through Rob's eyes and his energy and what he thinks about comics and his art you could get an appreciation for what he does and what he puts on paper and you start to get it. You go, oh, okay, I understand it. And there's always been this thing in comics between <clears throat> business and art. And there's people out there that get too far into it being art. This is my art and they're artistes mm -hmm. and they get screwed over in the business. You know what I mean? And they're lacking in the business and then you know, they want to rebel against the business system and all this other kind of stuff. So there's all this push and pull and the people like Rob and Todd and Jim and all these guys, they understood for the most part how to balance it and know, and know exactly what to give the fans up until they lost it. You know what I mean? <laughs> until Well, that, success, you know, yeah. makes, can make you lazy or, or yeah. focus on it, another thing. Exactly. Their, their, their hunger and their desire to actually produce and be the artist starts to dissipate, you know, and their business becomes the primary thing and they become the suit. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's, uh, and it, sounds and awful. It's, it's like a push and pull of, of that power, you know, with great well, power comes great responsibility. You it's know, an interesting, so interesting dynamic because if any of us, you know, turn around and started making millions like those guys did practically overnight. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'd say, see you suckers. Uh, yeah. Drawing yeah. comics is hard work. <laughs> it's like suddenly you got millions of dollars. You're like, do I have to work this hard anymore? Yeah. 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 I'd be in PG. It just depends on what you want, you know, like if you, if success, I mean, a lot of times like Jim Lee or Rob Lifeford or any publishing industry, initial success is just the beginning. You know, it's yeah. like, okay, well, let's see where this could go, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess you more success, more books, more complications, more lawsuits, all these various things you're going to deal with <laughs> as a business yeah. person. Well, and you're hiring other artists and you got to keep them happy, right? And someone always ends up pissed off about something. Right. And oh, so and so screwed me over. And it's, you know, it's, it's like my personal experiences with Dan DeDio are nothing but positive. But I know a lot of people that wouldn't share those same feelings, you know. <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, everybody, it's, it's kind of a Ford and Chevy kind of thing, right? You just sort of, you know, if you get treated well by, <laughs> if, you, if you get treated well for whatever reason, um, you're going to have good things to say about somebody. If you didn't, for whatever reason, you're not, you know, and it's, it's kind of hard to be it's objective true. once you're involved in something and somebody in your opinion has screwed you over. So, yeah. Well, I've heard a lot of those individual <laughs> uh, positions. Uh, there's a lot of people with that opinion. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but <clears throat> I'll, I'll, I'll give you a story about uh, Jim Lee. Um, uh, Jim Lee's a great artist, you know. I think he's better than what he produces for the general audience. Um, when I was a lot younger trying to get into the business, um, Jim Lee had me over to his studio when he was living in Oakland. This is a groomer situation? What is this? <laughs> no. Damn. <laughs> No, no, no. He just finished um, being on Punisher, and he just got like his first script to be on X Men. 
okay. and uh, he he wanted me to do some pages. I was already doing like independent stuff, but he wanted to, to help me get some solid Marvel stuff. And he got uh, the, the Chris Claremont script. And I looked at that and my eyes went cross because it was so much dialogue. I was like, what am I supposed to draw here? This is crazy. And he said, okay, you draw, you draw these three pages and I'll draw these three pages, the same three pages, and we'll come back in a week and see where we are. <clears throat> I felt miserably uh, you know, <laughs> trying to be, you know, Arthur Adams light, but, uh, but like he was an episode still, of Greybeards. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> he was, he was still uh, being helpful. And he was, he had me in his uh, 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 Loving living embrace. room and oh. he went and got all these sketch. <laughs> what? I missed like, that. Nothing. He also said you, you were said you said that, Jim had you and had had you and you were stuttering and he goes and you're in his loving embrace. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that too. You know, I'll, I'll get to that story later. <laughs> um, uh, had me and he brought the sketchbooks like a, like a, a, a bunch of them, and I was like, oh man, this stuff is awesome. Who is this? He's all, th this is mine. <laughs> I was just like, because the art was so different and just awesome, and I'm like, you should be drawing like that. And he said, uh, that, that work won't sell. He said, I'm here to sell books. And I was like, whoa. And from that point on, I knew that he was going to be successful and he's all about the business. He ain't about, you know, oh, well, what let, is me, let me elevate this thing and do this and becoming like this thing that his off." offspring created like the Travis Charis and the you know the Olivier Coipels and who take it to the zenith he ain't about that he's about giving the majority of the fans the essentials of what they want and what tickles that thing inside of them Ooh. and it works he you know? <laughs> oh, I see. where all of those other guys are laboring over their stuff forever you know what I mean and they'll get their accolades and they'll get, but at the end of the day, just say like if Olivier Coipel goes and sells his original art and you go, damn, you know, and he puts all this effort and he gets like 10 grand for a cover or a page. Yeah, Jim Lee does the same thing and gets 30. Yeah. Well, so what was this style like? This, this amazing, you know, non commercial, you know, I, I imagine it looking a lot like, uh, um, Terry Moore or something like what? What does Jim Lee draw like when he wants to draw? Well, it, it, it was it was exploratory. You know, like how uh, 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 Steve Rude has his sketchbooks and he's like, okay, here's this Loomis thing that I'm doing. Oh, here's this Alex Toth thing. And oh, then, yeah. And it was kind of all over the map, but he had things where it showed that he understood the human anatomy better than. Sometimes he, he's projecting in the comics, you know what I mean? You could tell where you go, okay, he didn't think about erasing or even could care about the foreshortening on this. You know, he's just going for energy and dynamics. And to, to go back to Rob, that's Rob is the epitome of that. Oh, Rob yeah, I was about is to just say. like the yeah. epitome of like, I'm going to put the visceral energy down, damn perfection. This is the energy that projects that thing. It doesn't have to be correct. You know what I mean? And that's what people are lining up to, you know, get this guy's stuff for. They're just like, oh, you know. You hear that, Aaron? I can't figure it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I still what, like what you're saying reminds me of a, a light bulb moment that I had looking at uh, classic painters that I, I, I didn't get impressionism, mm -hmm. didn't appreciate it. And then something that I was, you know, looking into it, a lot of, a lot of impressionists um, didn't start out that way. They started out as, as realists. They tried to do realistic style paintings and they graduated to impressionism. Yeah. And so they, they learned the foundations 
yeah. and then pull back from it. Yeah. And to create that um, energy and excitement with just a yeah. few strokes where before it would take them. Yeah. And to be fair to Rob, Rob, when, it, when he wants, he could do stuff that's proportionate and correct. And so everything he's doing to me is intentional. And I've never, like, I would love seeing Rob's pencils. Like when the the old shows that we used to go to, Gary, in Oakland and all that kind of stuff, when Rob would come in, i say, hey, man, let me see your pencils for your pages. And he would show me like a stack of his new book and he'd show me the pencils. That energy was right there before it was inked. And I was like, man, this stuff, because it, it's so intentional. And he's a good draftsman. You know, like it's it's intentional, you know, just all of this stuff. And it has this this energy, you know, but when you pull back from it and you get into your art mode and, you know, uh, oh, this has to be corrected. Th then you start to criticize and you and you forget that this is art where it could it can bend into this crazy, wacky stuff, you know, and. Well, let me let me give you an opposite end of that because after those guys came in and messed everything up for the rest of us, uh, <laughs> they quickly uh, like I, I got in, you know, that kind of like, oh, you're good, and then like slowly kind of bred the interesting out of me mm. uh, because it, you know you realize if you don't do something that is recognizable or sellable in in a way that they approve of then you're just not going to get work mm -hmm. um and that was like that for a minute um and you know there's there was there were levels in between that i guess if you could do if you really had something special like i mean i i was no jay lee of course but i mean if jay lee came out of there I'm sure they probably still uh still do well even in like today i, I would think that if if they just embraced some really wacky out there new kids kind of like idea of what comics is they might do really well something different i think so if you remember when he started doing uh was he on uh oh was it submariner i mean his stuff was his stuff was weird but it wasn't that weird it's like it got weirder as he went it's like he did enough conventional approach that he was able to get in the door and then people started noticing you know these little sort of oddities his work had and then he sort of then he started going leaning into that and you know by that point he was already in the door so he was allowed to do that but that was always the big thing was trying to figure out what can i do that's going to make them notice me you know and, and my biggest problem was i was always trying to draw really well and that's not really nobody cares know. about that yeah <laughs> well no it's there's truth in that it's not yeah style and visceral impact is the point of comics. And that's mm -hmm. what I was strongly lacking in. And, and you could argue that I, I still am. But because I've been so preoccupied with how well do I draw, you know? I was not looking at the right guys growing up. You know, I was looking at all, I was looking at Busema and I was looking at, I wasn't looking at guys that were pushing the envelope like, uh, you know, Simonson or Golden, uh, you know, I was looking at Wrightson, but Wrightson wasn't a comic book artist. He was an illustrator who worked in comics. Yeah. So he wasn't really the right guy to be looking at either uh, to get that sort of, you know, that idea of, hey, man, I can really go, I can go crazy on this stuff and I might come up with something really interesting. Instead, you're like, oh, I got to fix this line. And, oh, that arm it just doesn't... depends on what you want. You know, if you want to be oh. a great illustrator, then, you know, there's an audience for that, you know, for sure. I mean... If you're Frazetta, I guess. <laughs> you know, but trying to be trying to be good, if, if that's your style, then it's like then you're going against guys like Boland. You know what I mean? It's like, oh yeah. You know, it's like okay, well, I can't quite hit quite hit that mark. So you're better off working on trying to become a stylist than a great illustrator because that's a lot harder to obtain. I mean, so is being a stylist coming up with the right style. That really, you know, that's an art form in and of itself. That something people are going to respond to. Well, well, doing it one way. I mean, being a stylist, you could spend all your time figuring out a style, and then it not hit with the audience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, and if you do it the the other way, you, you're you're still going to have a solid foundation and still do good work that you know people will look at. But I don't know. I always tend to go to the stylist. 
I mean, every one of my favorite artists are stylists in some level or another. Yeah, I mean, that's why the that's why Arthur Adams is so popular. That's why yeah. Liefeld and McFarland are so popular. That's why Golden is so popular. I mean, you can look at Golden's stuff, and we're just talking about how great he was or is. And um, you, <laughs> whoops, I, I, I didn't mean it like that. I meant I meant his referring to Gary's book, you know, the stuff that he's already done that people have looked at over the years. Yeah. Um, but <clears throat> his anatomy isn't always right. His, you know, stuff he's doing isn't always right, but it's so freaking cool that it doesn't matter. <laughs> that, it's, that it's right. <laughs> yeah. Right, in his own way, right? So, um, and even like, even Wrightson too was a stylist, very much so, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's no mistaking, you know, a rights and face or something like that. You know, Neil Adams was a guy, maybe the guy, the ultimate guy that was able to combine style and ability, you know, drawing ability. Jim Lee's like that too, you know, really good artist, but also a really good stylist. But those guys are rare. When you're really, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of up against it when you're trying to um, incorporate both those things. That's why I'm, you know, pushing 60 and I'm still trying to incorporate those things, both those things. It's not just one or the other. It's hard, it's hard to find that, uh, that little, uh, that, that sweet spot, you know, where everything's working. Yeah. Yeah. I'm usually like, just like these days, I'm just like, am I, am I having fun with it? it yeah. All right. Then it's working, you know? Well, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. You get to a point where that becomes more important, you know? Because we don't have to impress Marvel or DC anymore. We have to impress the people that we're trying to sell our books to. Yeah. And that's 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 a different thing. Or it can be. Because I remember talking to Jim Salakrum, right? And he was editing Spider-Man. Jim Sauerkraut? What? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the great German editor, Jim Sauerkraut. You remember him, right? I thought that's what you said. <laughs> oh, Salakrum. Yeah. That's oh, a German, Salad German Salad. attorney. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he had basically given the reins over to McFarland against pretty much, according to him, everybody's sort of wishes, right? Because nobody got it. They're like, what is this guy doing? Why are you allowing him to do this? This stuff is crap and blah, blah, blah. But he, he felt like what he was doing was like we talked about it, we, he was responding to a visceral and he felt like the kids, the readers, you know, both kids and adults would respond to it. And they did. And it just, he just blew up. Right. And then suddenly everybody in the editorial is like trying to find the next McFarlane instead of complaining about it. You know, <laughs> you know, the other thing about any of that kind of stuff, uh, you know, we were probably direct, right in the middle of their transition and all that kind of stuff to superstardom. And when someone like me early on is daring to even do something like them and I'm dealing with an old school editor, they're like, what the hell are you doing? Draw those feet in there. <laughs> you know, or they're, they're saying, what is this no background thing? You get in there and put some <laughs> environment in there. And they're like, okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't always go over, so. And that's where the right place at the right time comes in, right? I mean, it's mm -hmm. um, you had to be working for the right person, and obviously, with Farland was. If he'd been working for, you know, Julie Schwartz over at DC, mm -hmm. <laughs> would he would have never got a job, you know? Yeah. So, and that that was that's always a tough thing too, is to hook up with the right editor that believes in you and is going to hire you and let you do your thing, and. Um, because ultimately, let, let's face it, not everybody blows up at the same level. But if you're, if someone says, you know what, Aaron, I really like your stuff. I'm putting you on Batman for two years. After two years on Batman, people are going to love me whether I deserve it or not. Um, just because I'm the Batman artist. Right? That's true. Yeah. I mean, there's a certain amount. I mean, that's not entirely true, but it, there, it is true to a certain extent. And I, I know that for a fact because... Everybody loved me when I was drawing Wonder Woman. As soon as I left Wonder Woman, they loved the next guy who was drawing Wonder Woman. You know, <laughs> yeah. They didn't come with me to my next project. So. Well, I mean, I I, I only followed a couple of people on Wonder Woman. You're one of them. Um, okay. uh, Terry Dodson. Um, yeah. Terry and uh, was it Rachel? Rachel. Yeah. Rachel. Um, who else? Uh, that's it. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I, I haven't looked at any of the uh, the classic. Um, oh, Bolin. I love those Bolin covers, man. I picked oh, yeah. a lot of those. Well, and Adam Hughes' covers, too. On those oh, that's, yeah, Adam Hughes. Okay. Um, I need to go. Everybody's, you know, the the legend of Wonder Woman. What's his name? Uh, uh, people George often. Perez. Yeah, people often talk about Perez. So um, I have yet to kind of, like, really dig into any of that stuff. No, I never, I never got into Perez as much as he is beloved and uh, revered, um, and I would never say anything negative about anybody. But I just, for me, just wasn't my cup of tea. But you know, what do so I know? Uh, Rob used to be like a Perez, like clone, you know, back in the day, and oh, that yeah. was a testament to how different he would draw now, and he would draw feet when he was doing a <laughs> Perez type thing. Those aren't yeah. necessary. You don't get you don't get intense action with feet in the shot. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what else is kind of interesting is I, I was looking at uh in regards to Rob's style is uh I was looking at some Guardians of the Galaxy uh from uh um uh, oh man what's his name a guy uh who am I thinking of who did uh Huh? Jim Valentino. Valentino, yeah. And there's there's some really interesting parallels to his style as well in Rob's stuff. Mm. I think. He All right. Here's, like, a, here's a technical question. If if you have a if you have a a pen that's got you know two ends on it, right? And one of the ends dries you up. Use the you sharp use edge. The sharp end. <laughs> If if one of them dries up, do you throw it out, or you keep using it till the other end dries up? I use it until uh, the other end dries. Are you talking about the? Uh, My zig is out of your, your zig. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. wondering if you could refill them. I don't think so. Of course, zig I'm not when you should have zagged, man. Copics. I used to throw my Copics away until Tim Townsend's like, "What are you, an idiot?" I'm like, "What?" Like, refill them. Like, oh. What, why don't you see if you could pop one of the things off and try to refill it? Yeah, just get some pliers and pull off the end cap. <laughs> no, no it works. Serious. serious. I'm being serious. Well, hey, have you, you ever do it seen... right over your artwork? Yeah, so I was going to say, do it right over the artwork. <laughs> yeah, have you ever seen a refill ink any place, though? I don't. Well, no, I don't just know. put some regular ink in it. No, try it. Listen. You, I'm not listening. Listen, if you're going to throw it away, you could experiment and just right. find out if exactly. it works. But right don't put, only over. put like one or two drops in. I made the mistake of putting too much and then it leaks out all over the place. I, don't know, I would do it with the. Uh, I'm talking um, about my pens for you in the chat. You know, <laughs> you throw something away though. That's Look, you know, you know, these pens, the uh, Faber Castle. Um, brush pins yeah. i would take the tip and put indian ink back in it and it would it would work yeah i've done that too really yeah. yes okay but you have to do it hovering the pen over the artwork <laughs> <laughs> right now live see what happens kind of thing yeah oh my God. i mean this show is about entertainment right <laughs> well i am moving so fast through this bedrock drawing, I may I have to ruin it just so I can start over and uh, give you guys an opportunity to catch up with me. <laughs> Do it. Do it now. Come on. <laughs> well, Aaron, I just going? want to let you know I'm here to support you. I mean, despite how much uh, trash talk David and Kelsey give you behind your back. I'm, I'm, I'm still here. Oh, no, someone's, uh, you know, someone's there for me. Uh, <laughs> have, you guys, have you guys seen that Bill Hader clip? I think he was on uh, Conan O'Brien. He's talking about when he uh, he was like a PA or something on a Schwarzenegger film, and Schwarzenegger went up to him and said, um, "You." Do you know where he has he a cigar in his hand? He goes, um, he goes, uh, do you know where Pete and Mike are? And he's like, uh, those are like his hair and makeup guys. And he goes, uh, no, but I'll find him for you. And he goes, good, show me your leadership abilities. I can't do it. <laughs> 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 you 
Kushner was doing this perfect thing. He's like, go find them and show me your leadership abilities. And he goes, ah, oh, they're right over there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's why Bill Hader's a professional comedian. I personally not. But um, it was pretty, pretty funny. I really got us off track there, didn't that whole pen stuff? But um, yeah, you were doing something with ink, I believe. Yeah. Right. Uh, so yeah, I've only got one of these zinc pens left, so I may have to splurge and dump another fourteen ninety nine and get ten more. So you really Man, digging? Man, huh? through those things. I still got a whole pack. Well, I've been using them. You're the one who turned me on. I'm the one using them. I actually use mine. Yeah. Hey, I've been painting. Talks about <laughs> using them. <laughs> I got to use my uh, my acrylics too. I got to. I got to get one of those pins. Yeah. Shut up. Mail you one. You have it. Uh, yeah. What you were gonna show us something? Uh, some artwork, right? Some Liefeld artwork that you were. Uh, Oh, they, uh, oh. Right, your, uh, your time your time with the Liefeld Studios. I think Gary was going to dig out some stuff. I did a parody story in What the... Oh. I got to find it, though. You got to give me a minute. So you did it in, um, you can have all the time you need. <laughs> Actually, so I got it handy because I was showing it not too long ago. Okay, so you, here... There, that that's that's it right there. Let's see this. Uh, yeah, blow it up, full screen. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> this is uh, he this starts to argue for a half a second. Now these are not quality page, but they're. Uh, it was uh, for what though, right? So I was doing like a, a Rob Liefeld X Force parody. Explosion. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah like, cool. Yeah. Not enough lines. Yeah. I, I, I didn't really have a grip on it. Could like I said, I still not really sure what those guys were doing or how they did it. And there's uh, feet. I'm seeing feet. Well, they're little tiny feet. <laughs> Good so, effort. Yeah, so that was kind of my uh my foray into the uh, trying was that your to first uh, Liefeld. Was that your where you were like, who? Uh, okay, let me go find some art. And then you're like, well, why am had, I doing this? Had, this was like, I don't know, this is early 90s. So he was already sort of the legend had already grown, you know, and it was kind mm -hmm. of like Gary was talking about where he had this the two, the two camps, right? One that was like, this guy sucks. How in the world is he getting work? And why am I not getting work? And uh, sour grapes, right? Exactly. And so I was like, okay, let's do a story that makes fun of the guy who's more successful than me. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was the weekly uh wizard magazine conversation. We go through it and point out who sucked and right why are they getting work? <laughs> no, what do you mean? Uh, they were uh, they had the the hot artist. Uh, thing or whatever the the, mo the pop most popular artist yep. of that month and, and we it, yeah we poured over that what, <laughs> what yeah the yeah hell is he doing he on this hour? I could have sworn I've seen Gary on there I was I was or not I'm Gary uh, no yeah, you're an when I was you inking Nexus I got a few <laughs> few nods but that was about it no Aaron, Aaron I think Blue I remember us. seeing Aaron on there right yeah. no <laughs> no I I did they did this thing called eight to the four I and know they David was never on there. Eight guys that uh, they said to keep an eye on, you know, and I was on that list along with Doug Mankey, um, J. Scott Campbell, um, uh, Travis, um, who's the guy who did Turok for a long time? Bart Sears? No, Sears? no, no, before him. Um, oh. Come on, you guys, help me on the chat. He did the, he was doing it uh, before Bart. Uh, Bob Layton. No. Oh. Um, <laughs> you don't have to say you no. Know that that Val Simix. No. Um, <laughs> Herb Trimpey? 
No, I'm not. <laughs> Kelsey's being funny. Sal Pasiba. So, yeah. Rags Morales. Rags Morales. Oh, okay. And um, Mike where Wingo was on. Mike where Wingo. Oh, my gosh. Ringo. Yeah. And Ringo was on there. And then um, the guy who did Batman Adventures and had like. Uh, Parabet. Yeah, Parabet. Mike Parabet. That was like the eight to the four. It was like every one of those guys was like super successful except me. But uh, it's still my, my claim to fame is I'm mentioning the same article with these other guys who are like infinitely more successful. Yeah, Aaron's yeah. claim to fame is that he's just to the left of all the famous people. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I'm next to him off screen. That's me right there. <laughs> um. <laughs> mm. well, at least you're in the photo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I had a photo of me, and uh, I was looking at a How to Draw Comics book, the Mar How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way book, upside down. I think. Uh, oh, they, oh no, they didn't use that picture. They thought I was being too trying to be too cute, so they didn't use that picture. But uh, oh, Aaron, so hey, look at Aaron's too cute. We can't put him in this. No, I mean, he's trying to be too oh. cute, not these too cute. <laughs> 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 That the only artwork he got? What else you got? <laughs> How many life oh, books? I'm going uh, to paint Bad Rock red. I don't care what the hell he's supposed to be. He has Whip some pipes. stuff out, Gary. I'm looking. I'm yeah, he's got. Red. Doesn't he have red tights uh, at some point? He does. he does have red stripes on his tights or red tights on his stripes or something. <laughs> <laughs> Red tights on his stripes, okay. Yeah, something like that. Not sure exactly, but uh, uh, we have an enormous crowd here today. Thank you guys for joining us. I want to appreciate that. It shows you that the name Rob Liefeld still brings in a crowd. Um, if you wouldn't mind hitting the like and subscribe if you're new to us. Uh, we do this every week and um, with a different subject matter. It's all a lot of fun. You guys get to vote on it. And uh, next week, I think Gary, it's Gary's turn to pick. So we have no idea what he'll throw out there in terms of choices for you guys. But uh, uh, mark us down so you join us every week right here. <laughs> you think Rob is in there? I don't think yeah. so. I think he's probably got better things to do. I'm just guessing. <laughs> no, I don't. But I think we're representing him well today. Um, yeah, some of us. Everybody say hi to Rob just in case. Hey, Rob, thanks for the inspiration. There, I said it. Hey, Rob, where's my money? Did he owe you? No, but I... <laughs> you guys ever do, like, early in your career, ever do a job, like, for a small independent, and then, like, they stiff you? Of course. Um, yeah, Hart Fisher. <laughs> <laughs> I'll name it. Dang, you Hart just put it straight out there. <laughs> yeah, because... I think it's funny. It's because like I, I did a, a job. It was just a pinup. One of the first things I ever did for Hart Fisher for uh, uh, what is it? Boneyard Press. And uh, I was already starting to get other work. And I was I kept like I really needed that money, even though it was just like, you know, probably 40 bucks or something. I don't even know how much I got for it. But page if you're lucky. Well, it was just one pinup. So it wasn't that big a deal. But I, I kept asking. Him, he's like, oh, I'll get it to you. I'll get it to you. And then like, uh, and then I got a um, a notice of uh, a bankruptcy, <laughs> basically saying you're never gonna get it. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I still have the letter. I have the. You should have. Uh, uh, you should have sent Shug Knight over there to get your money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had the same uh, uh, problem with uh, Blackhorn. Those are the people I did the first. Blackhorn. Yeah, that was uh, Steve Shanus's company, and oh, uh, okay. to his credit, I mean, they did go under. It wasn't like they paid me until they didn't, you know, until they went under, obviously. And he had like a bunch of old um, collectible stuff, like portfolios and prints and stuff, you know. And he, I think he said, you know, if you want to come by my booth at some show and you know take whatever I owe you in, you know, out in this stuff, that'd be fine. And I just never got around to doing it, so I was kind of pissed that I never. Because he had some good stuff, you know, like you're in those like Frankenstein portfolios by rights and then all that kind of stuff. Mm. Aaron, you've got a super chat. Oh, 
Son of Liberty Radio for two dollars. Thank you very much. He says, "I'm here because Kelsey said it was better than." Okay, we're not going to get into that. Um, <laughs> thank you for the two dollars. <laughs> well, it is. I, I found something <laughs> early David uh, image artwork. Pull up my my screen. Is this Liefeld uh, era, David Williams? Yep. Yep. Oh. Here we go. Oh, this was good stuff right here. David's going to shy away, but I, I think it was good stuff, man. Supreme. We'll, we'll be the judge of this. That was like the Superman character, right? Yeah, that's what it was going to consistently be like <laughs> until uh, funny business started happening. So are you saying that, uh, let's see, how do we get around this Wait, politically correct? Oh, yeah. You they didn't yeah. like your style or the way you were doing it? No, 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 no. Okay. All right. I'll leave it at that. But I do right. remember, Gary, I remember you inking pages from this. Yeah, um, I have scans or copies of the Xeroxes somewhere. I, I'm going to have to dig to find them. Well, we can't. You're not. Let drawing. Gary, let Aaron do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's not drawing, so distracting him isn't going to help anybody. <laughs> All right. I hate this hand. Well, I'm going to see if I can't fix it. In, no, 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 no. What would Rob do? Fix it in post. Oh, he yeah. just let it ride. Yeah, let it yeah. ride. That's it, man. Let it ride, baby. Oh, that ain't my style. <laughs> my style is to overwork it uh, to the point of uh, ruining it. And then and saving then, it uh, off camera. Yeah, put it, putting it away for a little while, building up some liquid courage. <laughs> coming back, coming back to it. <laughs> Give it another shot. Uh, oh, um, uh, my homie. Um, that was the cover for uh, Supreme miniseries that I was shown. So that stuff got published, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, now show uh, uh, Wildcat or no? What is it? Um, it's a DC book you did with the cheetah, cheetah Jaguar. girl, John Jaguar. <laughs> Or whatever. Man, both of you guys are really doing some Rob stuff. Like uh, Kelsey just did like that line work in those weird shin I was guard. Trying. <laughs> That's cool. And Aaron, you're doing like a total uh, uh, image uh, pose of how they would jump out at you and stuff like that. Right. That's well, cool. The pose is right. There's no way they would have spotted all these blacks on here, though. <clears throat> All that stuff was open. That's always uh, one thing that cracked me up about the image books is how many splash pages they tried to cram in every book. Mm -hmm. I was thinking on one book. I, it was a voodoo zealot story. Oh, I remember that, too. And I think it was Michael Lopez was drawing yeah. it. Oh, yeah. I like that. And, yeah, his stuff was amazing. But he would, he would spend, you know, like all day on one panel and then a few minutes on the rest of the page. Yeah. <laughs> and he, there was they sent me the script and you know as the inker it's like you know why are you sending me the script it's like well michael likes to veer from you know the storytelling sometimes so, so we want you to make sure that you know what's going on and there was a page where one of the bikini clad heroes was on the beach and these pirates, you know, modern day pirates are storming the beach. That's that was in the description. And he drew a splash page of this, you know, babe in a bikini looking out toward the ocean. And in the reflection of her sunglasses, we see a little tiny boat and these little guys running up on the beach. And that's how he drew pirates storming the beach yeah that's <laughs> a, the image way yeah yep, that was the image way what it was an amazing hockey. amazing drawing but the narrative didn't fit the uh the artwork mm -hmm. that's the way you do it you draw like a giant uh ass and then like you know right in between uh, the thigh gap you have the scene that they described yeah, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, that's, image. An that's an interesting thing because they <laughs> it just got me said um they uh, <laughs> that sort of mentality uh permeated all of comics 
like for example uh when it was great those were good when, times <laughs> when Bart Sears was drawing that Captain America and the Falcon series I don't know if you guys remember that or not yeah um he would get these scripts that were just like talking heads right so he would go in and draw like on one entire side of the page like this great shot of Captain America and then all these little panels of the dialogue crap and he used to do this all the time and I guess the writer so Andy was telling me the writer would get pissed off because he, he was adding all this stuff and I mean these pinup stuff but it was like you get to a point where the the audience was was they were expecting that sort of stuff and you, you start throwing talking heads at them they're like well, where's the exciting stuff where's the splash page you know and so artists were going in there and like creating stuff that wasn't in the script yeah. just to um, you know, make the page look cooler. And we also, if, I don't know if you remember or not, they had that, uh, Gary went, we went one, at least once, maybe twice to that uh, uh, ProCon that was right before WonderCon when it was in Oakland. Yeah. And we would go to these seminars and stuff. And I remember some of the writers were just bitching up a storm because they were like, the artists aren't drawing what we're writing. They're just drawing to resell their art. And we're kind of looking at each other going, yeah, we are. <laughs> That's yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Art, <laughs> the, the artwork. Yeah, it's kind of your point is what exactly. <laughs> uh, but I remember um, that being a big deal, too, because, you know, we would just. Well, seminars were pretty cool. I remember they had, uh, didn't Malibu put those on? I don't, I don't remember. Know. They, well, there was different sponsors for different things, right? Okay. I mean, was, yeah, I remember one. John Romita was the, the Yeah, he talked. He talked about freelancing, and I remember you making the joke. What does he know about freelancing? He's worked as a company guy. His entire <laughs> 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 Did I say that? Burn. <laughs> well, he was a freelancer a long time before he he. Did, you know, worked at Marvel. Yeah, but he had been he had been on staff at Marvel like since this. Yeah, know, that's true. But he, you know, he, he wasn't born with a contract. He yeah. earned it. Yeah. yeah so I, I don't remember saying something like that, but that. I, uh, I but if it's, I, yeah. I could have said something like that. <laughs> uh, I don't. I'm not trying to embarrass you. You know, you're like taking shots at the great John Romita Senior. But I'm just saying, uh, you know. I remember we him because we thought, you know, he was talking about, you know, how to make it as a freelancer, and he hadn't worked as a freelancer for, you know, like thirty-five years. You know? Yeah, yeah. I think you knew that I wouldn't remember that. I think you're the one that actually said it. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to pawn it off on you. That does sound kind of like something Aaron would say. Yeah, it is I do remember me to talking about that, like he was talking about inking, and then he went into like different categories. And you know, I perked up, and he was talking about differences between, uh, you know, like regular comic superhero inking and and uh, funny animal, cartoony type inkings. And it's like yeah. what? And well, and yeah. that's when I started studying Gottfriedson and and Walt Kelly, and and you know, it's like yeah, Romita was right. There there is a difference. You don't well, use the same techniques. What we used to do in those seminars is we get somebody like that in there and we would just start asking questions and get them off topic to talk about what we wanted to hear. Right? <laughs> and so yeah. it's like it was like the substitute teacher would come in and you're like, Yeah, yeah, that math stuff's great, but did you see this movie last week where yeah. you know, and so yeah, we I don't know how much he actually talked about freelancing as much as he talked we ended up talking about art and inking. Yeah, you know. Cool. Get him off subject to go, man. Have you seen that life old guy? He's a <laughs> <laughs> what the nids, yeah. The class is but, done, you know. Ramita is such a um likable guy, you know, he's yeah. such a gentleman that you, <laughs> you, you just probably won't. be like, Yeah, that could privilege to hear whatever he had to say. Yes, yeah. exactly. Now, were you were you in on that one uh, when they had Jim Shooter? I can't remember what it was for, but Jim Shooter was there and was with a guest speaker, and he slammed the table with his fist. Do you remember that? No, I, so, I wasn't. No, no. He was because he was talking about because there was a lot of rumors, of course, going around about um, uh, uh, Shooter and how he'd handled Marvel and how things went down and all this kind of stuff, right? And what how hard he was to work for, whatever, right? And um, he was talking about that and he started just getting worked up and worked up and he just slammed his fist down on the table and the whole room went quiet he's like you know 
you need to research and find out the truth about people before you jump to these conclusions or whatever. <laughs> Just like, whoa. <laughs> Well, he was an intimidating figure. I mean, he he was a big dude, and he you know he had this intense face, so I could see how you know <laughs> slamming the table would have gotten people's attention. Well, I don't know that he was doing it to get attention. I think he was really just upset about you know what people were saying about him and uh, his legacy at Marvel. I got a critique from him in his office in New York at, at Marvel, and. You know, at that time, I'd never seen him or met him. And, and I, you know, I've been shrinking over the years. I'm probably about 6'3 now. Back then, I was probably about 6'4. <laughs> and, and he towered over me. He was, oh, yeah, he he was, was a, a big dude. He was like, Who is this? Jim Shooter. Shooter. Oh. Jim Shooter. Yeah, he was a big oaf of a man. <laughs> yeah, he was big. <laughs> <laughs> he could, you know, put it that way. Uh, <laughs> When I was a freshman in uh, high school, I cold called him, cold oh, called yeah. Marvel, and I asked to talk to Jim Shooter, and he picked up. <laughs> and I told him who I was, and I wanted to submit some stuff, and he just answered questions, and he he was so cool, and he talked to me for about like thirty minutes, just taking my nerd questions, and that sent me on my trajectory of like, okay, I'm gonna work. In comics, <laughs> this is yeah, he was like that with me. He was very patient and and informative, and and you know, explained things to me. And you know, I I was I was surprised how much time he spent with me. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's how it was back in the day too. You you'd call up uh, Marvel or yeah. DC, you get the operator lady, and you just say, you know, yeah, can I talk to so and so? And yeah, and you then go. your phone would start ringing. You'd be like, oh crap. <laughs> like, what do I say? Yeah, suddenly you're on. Oh crap! Uh, uh, all right. Can now I, I must on? admit, my family did not appreciate that phone bill. You know, back <laughs> oh, in the day. Oh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Who are you calling in New York? <laughs> in <San Francisco? laughs> yeah, back in the day when uh, you had to pay for long distance. Mm -hmm. oh, I used to call people's uh, homes. Yeah. yeah, I heard about guys like, like read in an <laughs> interview where someone was from, and then. Mm -hmm call that city's information yeah mm -hmm. yeah i did that too and i spoke to a lot of wives answered the phones like yeah ellie frazetta picked up oh you phone. actually called for <laughs> yeah i called for that spoke to ellie uh she was kind of curt with me oh really <laughs> yeah uh i called uh called the kirby's oh wow and didn't Parker get Jack. Um, what was uh, Jack's wife's name? I forgot. Roz. 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 Yeah, of course. Roz. Roz was very kind. She spoke to me for a while. Uh, I called uh, Will Eisner, and Jeez. Will picked up the phone, oh, and wow. I spoke to him for about twenty minutes. He was he was very um, polite to me. Some idiot, you know, calling him out of the blue. <laughs> he, was, he was very polite. I did the same thing. Uh, uh, I, I moved to Oregon um, to try to schmooze Dark Horse into giving me some kind of job. Uh, and, uh, How'd that work out? Not very well. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, a lot of cool things happened out of it. I got the I got Stell Freeze's number from somebody that worked there, and that kind of started my path of learning, you know, from him. Um, but also, um, I just looked in the phone book, and freaking Mike Mike Mignola right in the phone book. And, and so I called him up and I, his wife answered the phone and I was like, oh, can I talk to Mike Mignola, please? Or Mignola is what I said. You know, uh, of course, I think it's Mignola, right? In that yeah, word? Mignola. No, no. Yeah. It's granola. Uh, it's granola, yeah. Granola <laughs> Genoa. But no, he, um, <laughs> she she went and got him and she was like, she just kind of giggled to, to herself and then like, hang on one second, I think he's in the back, you know. She went and got him, and he was like, hello, how you doing? You know, kind of sounded like Cecil a little bit. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. he was yeah. cool. He talked to me for, like, maybe half an hour, 45 minutes or so. Really nice guy. Uh, Derek Robertson uh, of uh, the boys' fame and uh, Transmetropolitan. Yeah, uh, yeah. He used to live out in San Mateo, and I lived in Hayward. And, um, he called me, like, in this, like, kind of a tizzy. He was like, dude, he said, you won't believe this. 
and this is like in the in the eighties, and he goes, "I just I just called Cindy Lauper," <laughs> and she picked up the phone, <laughs> and, and 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 she goes. How did you get this number? <laughs> <laughs> Her number was in the phone book. <laughs> oh, wow. She figured it out. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's how far back where it was so, yeah. these people were accessible in the early days. Yep. She didn't oh, know better to take her name out of the phone book. <laughs> how did you get this number? Kevin Thomas. In the chat says, the man been calling Marvel in the early 90s and wanting to talk to Aaron. I was in the waiting room to get in in the 90s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you'd have called Marvel, the, the secretary would have gone, or the receptionist would have gone, hey, Aaron, call for you. <laughs> That'd be right there on the couch <laughs> waiting to get in. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have to wait in the waiting room when I went in with Terry Austin. They saw that I was with Terry and the door, all the doors opened quickly. Magically. <laughs> oh, wow. What yeah, the no, hell was I thinking to do uh, cable? I don't know, man. You got a lot of guns and pouches and crap in there. Yeah, there's not enough detail on that gun. Yeah. Right yeah. More pouches. <laughs> More pouches. Oh, Cartridges. <laughs> One bullet casings flying everywhere. You know what I ran into in the elevator at Marvel very, very early on? Um, was Murphy Anderson and his wife? Is that the guy that did the uh, the puppet TV shows? Oh, that's Jerry Anderson. Never mind. <laughs> Who? You which? Know, who's Murphy Anderson? Which one? Legendary him? DC who's artist. Murphy Anderson. Oh my gosh. <laughs> he uh, he inked. Uh, did he work with Liefeld? No. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know who he is. Aaron's gonna get bad. <laughs> yeah. uh, <clears throat> Oh man, he threw the spectrum. <laughs> that would have been interesting. I would have liked to have seen that. No, but I, I mean I got to talk to him for a couple of minutes in the elevator. Very nice gentleman. Is that yeah. all you the the in the elevator? Yeah. <laughs> the you do why I started looking at out of his story then because of Murphy Anderson. Gary knows who Murphy Anderson is. Charlie Murphy. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Dang it. <laughs> that was cold. <laughs> Get your feet off my couch. So, okay, you never answered my question. Who's Jerry Anderson? Or Murphy Anderson? <laughs> Murphy Anderson. He was a DC artist and he. he, he. he he illustrated, but he also inked, and he was a really good match with Kurt Swan. Yeah, he inked Kurt Swan for years on Superman. He drew the Spectre in the 1968 series. Um, he he did just tons of stuff over at uh, DC. Why? That's the interesting thing was why he was in the Marvel offices. I had no idea. But did, there he ever, did Kurt Swan do any work for Marvel? I don't think so. Murphy must have done something. I mean, I don't know why he's been there. Hey, in the chat, do you know if, if uh, Murphy did any work for Marvel? Because I, I don't recall that. Yeah, Marcus Killigrew, do you know? He was trying to he get was, work he was He was a DC guy. I mean, he was under contract, and he was one of their, their um, bedrocks. Well, We're going to get him in trouble now. Uh, he was Marcus says, Marcus, 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 Marcus Murphy Anderson. Yeah. Mar Marcus Killigrew says, who's Murphy Anderson? Laugh out loud. Uh, Kevin Wolf says, Kelsey, are you sure you like comics? <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, what do you got? Man. No, I don't know. I don't know who. Yeah, I, maybe I know his work. Who's Kurt Swan? Murphy are you Ed? serious? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you were about to get violent there for a second. We're about to shut this thing down. We're about to take you to school, boy. <laughs> Marcus, Marcus, could you elaborate on that? I've, I've not heard this. Yeah, he says Murphy Anderson is the reason the comic page is ten by fifteen instead of twelve by eighteen. Yeah, really? Marcus yeah, Kilgore really like knows all. That. He's like the Watcher. I never met the. I never read the fine print on my comic paper before. Huh. Is it? Where does that info come from? Like, why? Yeah. Give me <laughs> why? some. Give me some comic book history. Why? Yeah. Why did he decide to do this? And why did everybody follow this guy? Why? Did, why? 
Well, I will this Marcus will he'll fill us in, I think. He'll oh, you don't know? I, I don't thought you were a comic I, fan or something. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm just reading what the chat wrote. Okay. Yeah, I've not heard this either, so I'm interested. Um Kelsey's getting a little salty now. <laughs> So You're what? Right. No, seriously. Like, I, I mean, you know, this is yeah, obviously I'm, somebody I should know. Um, what does he draw like? Does he draw like Michael Golden? He drew like Kurt Swan. I'm going to pull out some Murphy Anderson. <laughs> yeah. It Never was like, that, you know, the Kurt Swan <laughs> DC house style is, is like, you know. So is is, is uh, boring is what you're saying? Yeah, is Aaron, is Aaron doing <laughs> some research? Yes. Yeah, yeah good. <laughs> he was getting oh, a little I, too close to finishing over there. He had to slow you, down. Uh, you, <laughs> you are Kelsey. No, he got a comic book. Huh? There's there's Murphy Anderson, Spectre number one. That's a cover by Murphy Anderson. Right? Oh, I got that. Okay. In your face, Kelsey. Yeah. Oh, I was. Yeah. I used to always uh, oh, yeah. try to draw his stomach muscles. I like the way he drew. Uh, yeah. Stomach yeah. Muscles. Yeah. His anatomy was solid. Yes. I'll have to look. Uh, when I'm done with here, Marcus Killigrew is explaining the. Uh, he says he had the company that did color seps and found that you could shoot two pages at once instead of one page, saving a lot of money. Hmm. Good to know. Thank you, Marcus. That is news to me. Well, I'm wondering, like, what was he a publisher? Why would he care? Yeah, look it up, Aaron. <laughs> yeah. Well, it says he had the company, so I, I assume that he either worked for or owned the company that did the color separations for the comic book people. Oh, so he, okay. He I see. I see. Yeah, because the company sent sent all that stuff out. Yeah, and so then he would say, well, you guys need to do them this size because we can, you know, it's more cost effective if you did them this size. So there you go. He was saving them money? What the hell is with this guy? <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't he be Tell like that? I'm, I'm, I'm picking up a motif here. You have a beef against Murphy Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Guy, uh, I was at a beach once. Guy, I had a girlfriend there. Guy walked up, kicked <laughs> sand in my kicked face. Sand on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and me and we go way back of Murphy Anderson and I. <laughs> no, I just uh, it's a funny. Uh, <laughs> Murphy Anderson. I gotta find Murphy Anderson. Out. That guy. I'll get him one day. <laughs> Someday I'm gonna have my own show on YouTube, and I'll tell him. Well, I just think it's funny when you you hear like an artist that it's kind of like when a. Uh, I started finding a. Uh, oh man, I can never remember his name. I keep wanting to call him a Craig, Craig Murphy or something. Uh, no, what was his name? Johnny? No, not Johnny Craig. No, Johnny not Craig. Craig Springsteen. Something Let's Craig. See. Something Murphy. No, it's funny because I just I ran across him the other day, and it's he has his name has nothing to do with Craig anything. So I don't know where that keeps coming from. Uh, but he has this real chunky, inking style. Um, he did a lot. He did stuff for Batman. Um, while you're th while you're thinking, uh, it's really different than anybody else. Blackjack says Murphy Anderson also did a Red Raven pick that was later used official Marvel handbook. Um, mm. Marcus follows up with he liked drawing ten by fifteen as did Neil Adams. Kirby Ditko hated ten by fifteen. Um, they they were what was the other size. And it says, uh, Kevin Wolf says, uh, Neil was instrumental in a push for 11 by 15. That the older guys had to adjust, even Kubert. Hmm. Oh, Luffy God. <laughs> His God says, Graham Nolan? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, no, oh, you mean the guy I'm trying to think of? No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he's much older. Uh, Describe his, his work again. Well, it, his stuff, his inks look almost liquid, and he does really like chunky shapes. And it's there's nobody like him, honestly. Um, when did he draw Batman? Oh man, he's gonna. I'm thinking of uh, 
Von Eden. What was his name? No, not uh, not Von Eden. Trevor Von Eden. No. When did he draw back? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I make, a, look, make a guesstimation. I got a ton of his artwork. Let me see if I can find some. Um, did a, he did shadow covers as well for the shadow. Kaluta. Uh, Tom Mandrake. No, no. Howard this is going to be the this going to be the rest of the show. Howard Chaykin. No, this way old, way before that. Bevo Lottie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that sounds like a modern pop lady. Are you talking about you talking about like forties shadow covers? <laughs> um, yeah, like Kelsey doesn't know. Well. Maybe not that long. Kelsey right? doesn't know. Uh, Phil uh, in the chat. should says, look at the chat. No, not yeah. Phil in the chat says I'm with Kelsey on this one. I work for a corp with a bonus program for coming up with ideas that would have the company save the company money. This one guy got a one time. 5k bonus for saving them 300k a year wow there you go yeah okay. that must have been in the old days norm brayfogel squibs suggests. i love brayfogel but that's not yeah. that's not thing kaluda uh robbins you guys will never get this, this is what George, i'm talking about the George, whole point of this was this is an artist George that nobody's heard of female See more butts. Frank Robbins. <laughs> Frank Wiley, Robbins. Wiley Draw got it. Wiley Draw's got Frank it. Frank Robbins. Frank uh, Robbins. Good job, chat. <clears throat> yeah, that oh no, Henry Jeremy says Robbins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, a few people got it. Yeah, yeah. Warner Frank Robbins. Robbins is one of those guys that we were just talking about how like I like I can't I can't even remember his damn name, and I like him. <laughs> yeah, I like him. I, I never liked Frank Robbins when he was working at Marvel in the seventies. He was drawing like Captain America, and I loved it. It was so yeah. wonky. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm so, with you on this one, Aaron. I didn't. I didn't appreciate Robbins. I probably would now, but I didn't back then. Yeah, his faces were like milk Kenneth on drugs. You know, it was just yeah, weird. yeah. I didn't like that then. I didn't Maybe like Kenneth either. Kelsey, you know who loves Frank Robbins is uh, Frank Espinoza. Hey, yeah. Uh, that makes sense. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like it. His his inks look like they're still wet. Yeah, really weird looking, wild. Yeah, Frank would go on and on about Robbins, Frank Espinosa. He'd be like, "Ah, David, you you should check out this Frank. Ro look at this," <laughs> and, he, and he would do a impersonation of some drawing that he would do, and it would be like spot on. Look at he would do a leg like this, David. Look, he was a baseball <laughs> lucky to draw like Frank Robbins. Man. Is uh, Marcus Killigrew being sarcastic? We've all heard of Frank Robbins. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, no, Aaron, you've not. got a, another super chat. Uh, oh, Patty Q. Uh, Kelsey, why are his pants orange? Love this show. Good to see you guys. His pants That's are red, Patty. Red. You've been I looking think, at, staring at Aaron's art too much. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say, there's that ongoing joke. Every time I do something red, it turns out orange. So I think there's a <laughs> I mean, Gary's shirt is red right now, so no, no, that's, no. It looks it's like orange, it's like it's, tangerine. It's pumpkin. Yeah. Yeah. Pumpkin. <laughs> yeah, pumpkin. Or as the kids say, pumpkin. Pumpkin. <laughs> pumpkin. I got like weird ways of saying things now. Marcus Killigrew says, "I'm almost as old as Aaron, so I bought the Robin's Captain America." Ooh, wow. Yeah. So what was that? Nineteen thirty. Um, <laughs> yeah, I thought that was. I was a huge uh, Kirby Captain America fan back then, and I thought that was too big of a jump from what Kirby was doing and, and Frank Robbins. Well, I do you think they cared, or they just think we need warm bodies? Who do we got? What it was. Well, they uh, hired guys that could get the you know meet the deadlines, and yeah. those guys were professionals. <laughs> but well, Frank had this kind again, of. Yeah, he's thing a stylist. That, it looked like Milton Kniff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you don't like Milton Kniff? Yeah, sure. yeah. What are you saying there? You don't like Milton Kniff? Like I don't like Kniff's faces. I mean, I like everything else. I like his I quality, know. though. I just, don't like, I just never like his faces. I don't like your face, Milton. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean your arm. I don't you know. like your hands. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. She's going to get all personal. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh my gosh. Poor Frank Robbins. 
Um, I don't even remember who was right. I think Sal Buscema was drawing Cap at that period of time. Sal was like, they bumped him around. He was like drawing everything at Marvel. Yeah, he was another company guy. I wonder how much work Sal Buscema did. Oh, my God. He, it's just thousands of pages. He might yeah. be the record holder if anybody I, really looked at it. Dude, I bet, I bet he is. Because, I mean, he just... And you, you take into all the like inking he did also on top yeah. of the penciling. Yeah. Because he inked uh, he inked Big John on uh, a Silver Surfer, and then he uh, but he was also drawing the Avengers because he took over for Buse John on the Avengers during that period of time. It was like, dude, man, he was like doing yeah. everything. Um, I'm I'm with Blackjack. He said he was a never fan of of Sal Buscema. I wasn't either. I wasn't either. Until I became yeah. a professional and, and Paris Collins sat me down and gave me a lecture of why Sal Buscema was great. And he, well, he convinced me of, of Sal's. Uh, I don't think Paris Collins could convince me of that, but I think he was. No, he did. I mean, he, he, loved, he loves Sal in, in, you know, ways that I hadn't considered of, of what a professional he was. And, you know, well, solid, know. solid storytelling and, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean. But I don't know. I, yeah, I mean, he was solid. I'll give you that. I, I took another look when uh, when Dale started coming to hang out with us. Uh, we did like a, a poll, like who, what was your favorite folk artist? And of course, mine was Dale. Uh, that was my generation. That was. Uh, but so many people said said Sal, and that was like really <laughs> okay. Well, a lot of people say you ever heard Trippy, and I was never a big Trippy fan. Well, yeah, Trippy is another guy. I use him as my joke name. Anytime somebody's like, <laughs> "Who's that guy?" I'm always like, "Herb Trippy." Yeah, and you always get a laugh at that, right? Right, because like everybody saying, knows Herb Trippy. Yeah, that's like saying Billy Barty. People will laugh. Yeah. Who's Billy Barty? I know. Oh gosh, I'm just kidding. He's he, a great he artist. Anderson. Yeah, he's a great. Yeah. He did. He did cap uh, after Frank. Yeah, Rogers. he was Murphy Anderson's assistant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I liked. You know who I liked a lot was John Severin, because I. Yes, I think John Severin, Severin was one of the all-time underrated artists. He was. He was. He, he was he great. Draw a lot, but he would ink guys, but he would like turn it into his stuff. Yeah. When he inked it, you know. What do and you do? So, Trippy was getting inked on the Hulk by Severn. I love that stuff. Yeah. Or the King Cole stuff that Maurice Severn drew, but John Severn inked. Oh, yeah. Oh! Maurice Severn, John Severn. I never yep. never put those two and two together. Oh, brother and sister. They're brother and sister? Yep. Oh, interesting. What other brother sister art teams are there? I don't think I've ever thought about that. I don't think there is. That, that was it? There's a lot of husband wife teams, a lot of, you know, brothers, I guess. Um, I don't think I've ever when you heard see, of them. Uh, <clears throat> when you see the Dodsons, you can sometimes you can get the impression that they're brother and sister. Oh, the, really? Yeah. <laughs> Terry, Terry, Terry and Rachel are so much alike. They interesting. Really interesting. They, they're so much alike. They're, they, they're made for each other. No, Maybe they were made with each other. Yeah. <laughs> that's not where I was going with this. Oh, <laughs> I'm disavowing what Kelsey is. is uh, yeah, I'm just trying out. to follow the conversation. Yeah, I don't know what's going on here, Gary. I'm not sure what uh, I'm pushing. just, yeah, I'm washing my hands of this show. <laughs> Too late now. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. All right. I was trying to find this Hulk cover I did that was inspired by Sal Buscema. Oh. I was going to show you guys, but I can't find it. Shoot. No, I shouldn't say I didn't like Sal Buscema. I just, I mean, he was confident and he was all, you always got solid stuff from him, but it was, it was nothing that made me really feel like, well with it, you know, and say, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't, it was, it was uh, accomplished, but wasn't. Sexy, I guess it didn't have that that thing where you go, oh yeah, so I know, yeah, did that, you know? He did. Didn't he do? Uh, he did one of the Spider-Man titles 
for years. Was it spectacular? I think it was. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing about him. You can't point to one run. He did everything. He's yeah, like literally he, he everywhere. Was a, he was a guy that they'd say, hey, Sal, we need this stuff quickly. And then he would he'd ink several issues in a couple of weeks. Yep. Oh, wow. he, was, he was a machine. He, uh, you know, he ate Barry Smith on Conan, yeah. too, yeah. and did actually a pretty nice job over it. Yeah. Which is not easy. Well, then oh. he was inking. Barry Smith, uh, Barry Smith was, was pretty rough. And yeah, that's he was probably kinda... why they hired Sal to, to give him a powerful <laughs> look. Yeah, that's probably true because he was still sort of transitioning from that Kirby phase. Right, he was right. in. Um. That was a remarkable thing, too. It's like Stranko is the same way. If you look at Stranko's early stuff, it, it's like he's just a Kirby clone Kirby and the same thing with Barry Smith. But then he watched him, and suddenly they just kind of got their own traction and became something totally different, which was really bizarre to watch because it happened. It was especially with Barry Smith; it happened super quick. You know, when you see his, you know, later issues of Conan and how he evolved, and then you see his like, what was it? X? Did you do it? X Men? Was that his like first? <laughs> yeah, that was the very first. Yeah, it was the, fifth, the X Men. How Kirby that was compared to. Mm -hmm. His, his Conan stuff, his later also did an issue of Daredevil that was very Kirby. Yeah, very yeah, Kirby. yeah. I mean, that stuff was night and day. Remember that, Gary? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, come on. You've been teasing me with that for 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> still waiting for it. Yeah, I still I have a, a few um, Dragonfly pages. Come on, man. Dragonfly. Dragonfly. What the heck? Yeah. See how you are. Blackjack says, "Can you imagine if Vince Coletta would have inked Stephen Platt?" <laughs> oh wow, that would have been weird. <laughs> uh, there'd be like Coletta no would have erased half of everything. Yeah, you got so many bullets here. You just need one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are all these lines for? We don't need all this crap. A real uh, man only needs one bullet. <laughs> uh, we got 26 minutes. Kelsey, right. are you painting all Judas Priest, man? Yeah, he's all, he's all finished. <laughs> Aaron, just just look at the screen. It's all going on. Judas Priest. <laughs> like, Kelsey is like really finessing that crotch area. Though. I know. He's going over it and over it and over it. Um, yeah, I got a nice point happening with some light all the glare. On there. And stuff like that. He said, this has to glisten. What's that? You, have, you gotta have that skull with the little eyeballs looking down. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Might as well do David, that. what is that Spider-Man thing you got there next to your table? No, you don't worry about that. That's not none of your concern. Well, then what'd you put it up for? I was trying to get it out of the way. I was shuffling. Oh the paper. yeah. Okay. Here we go. It was at the top of the stack. Oh, so secretive. Marcus says, actually, when I was a kid, I loved Sal and Coletta on Cat. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. <laughs> I, was okay. no, I was okay with Sal. I did Coletta. I was never okay with. Never. <clears throat> um, he was okay on Kirby's Thor once in a while. But other than that. Yeah. I've said this before when Coletta's name has come up. I was never a fan of Coletta until I did some assistant yeah. work when I was working for DC going into the office. I'd go into production and, and ink backgrounds of whatever they put in front of me. Mm. And they put a stack of, of um, Kurt Swan, Vince Coletta, Superman daily strips, newspaper strips. And so I inked a bunch of the uh, backgrounds for that, but Coletta was inking Kurt Swan, and it was some of the best inking I'd ever seen. And I, I couldn't believe it was Coletta. You think it he was, just it, it wasn't Swan his, you know, like real quick pen scratchy stuff. It was brushwork, lovingly mm -hmm. rendered, and that's when I realized that Coletta was that talent, and he chooses. To ink the way he does in comics because he's he was a volume guy he tried to ink as, as many pages as possible to you know to, to make as much money as he could 
And maybe that was one he, maybe way to he just do it. really liked Kurt Swan, but didn't like Kirby very much. Well, I think his his page rate was higher because it was for the newspaper oh. strip, and he was, you know, I think he was trying to show off, oh, you know, yeah. what I could do. It was it was a showcase, you know. Mm. This was going to be well, now. Give me a job so I could crap paper. it out after that. Yeah. <laughs> Right, you know, but it, it proved to me that Coletta had talent. He wasn't just... Yeah. He just wasn't exercising. You know. So, on one hand, I respected his talent. On the other hand, him choosing, you know... <sighs> to, to ruin to Jeff Ruby Cages. <laughs> yeah, is, is also that, you know... I've heard that story with, you know, him and, and Kirby, him, Inc. and Kirby, but has he, you got to wonder how many other people has he erased whole background elements of well, like, there other stories? The, the Kirby Collector, been? where they publish pencils and inks. Yeah. You know, to see a lot of the Kirby pencils and then see what Coletta was doing in the inks. He chose not to ink a lot of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, well, isn't that the thing that he would do in uh, Tomb of Dracula, or was that the? No, he, he was inking Tomb, Tomb of Dracula. Dracula. Wasn't he inking over uh, whoever before Palmer, or was Palmer always inking that? I think Palmer was. Palmer over. inked most of Tomb of Dracula. I don't remember Coletta getting involved in that. Okay, well, I, I can't so see. Fun. Did Coletta ever ink Gene Colan? Oh, that would be crazy. Yeah. I don't know, but I remember this story, and I thought it was Coletta, but maybe it was Palmer went in and uh, erased all the uh, uh, all the stuff in the fog, so it was just like fog. <laughs> no, <laughs> I was Dracula, but maybe it wasn't. I don't remember that. Yeah, Mark Wolfman tells that story that that I think it was like the second, the later Dracula series. It wasn't the the original one. Oh, okay. it was the later one, and. Um, Gene Corlin sent Marv Wolfman a stack of pages to voucher. Somehow the payment was going through Wolfman. And there was one page that was just some vague pencil lines on it. And Colin, Gene Colin vouchered for that page. David, what are you doing? Yeah, what are you doing? Nothing. 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 Are you starting over? Is that was that the sound of Artwork ripping apart in frustration. So we anyway, go. there was a page of Marcus um, Killebrew says he inked colon before Palmer on Tomb of Dracula. There it is. Wow. Anyway, go ahead, Gary. Finish. I'm sorry. Wolfman said that there was a page on the stack that was just a splash page of just you know like light pencil lines, and so Wolfman called up. Gene Colin said, "What's this?" He said, "Oh, it's it's uh, fog." He tried to voucher for a splash page of fog. Maybe that's one of the story. That was Gene Colin, right? Yeah, yeah, Gene Colin. Yeah, the fog, the fog didn't work, but the uh, snowstorm for John Byrne that worked. <laughs> they said, "Go fog yourself. Get out of here and do some work." <laughs> so at least he had the creativity not to say it was a snowstorm. Yeah. <laughs> Fog. <laughs> I'm gonna do a snowstorm issue, man. Yeah, I could do that thing in a breeze. Aaron, you uh, have no another <laughs> super chat. Oh, this is a Kel Razor. Maybe that's a relation to Kelsey. I don't know. Four ninety nine. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, the worst team was Coletta over Perlin and Werewolf by Night. Yeah, hands down, it completely ruined the book. Coletta should never do fur. <laughs> 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 well, Marvel Coletta. put Coletta on a lot of their graphic novels because of the the page count that they wanted the book, you know, to be published on time. And so he would go in and you know ink what, what like 60, 80 pages in, in a few weeks and wow. kind of defeat the purpose of it being a graphic novel. Exactly. It's like, oh yeah, this is a prestige format. Now hack it out so we can get yeah. it out on. But that you know, Marvel is all about meeting the deadline, and 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 Coletta was the guy for that. Yeah. Well, that I mean, there is some truth to that I mean, I've complained before about getting, you know, having some jobs that aren't, you know, stuff I'm necessarily proud of. But it was, hey, we need this in two weeks, kind of thing. And so, you know, I mean, I guess I shouldn't be too hard on Coletta, but he made a whole career out of it. You know, it's not like just, 
like he, every once in a while he did a crappy job, you know. Man, he... I'm, glad he's, I'm glad he's not alive because he he had his mob connections come over and put the hit on me for saying that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He did um did guys like those did they get royalties back then or did that come way later? Uh, that came later. Did did yeah. anything happen retroactively for Sal? Because he I, I done doubt so it. much. Well, no, I doubt wait, it. Sal was on Sal was on Spider Man in the nineties when that stuff was blowing up, so he got some royalties. Oh, okay. Man, that would have been yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah. They probably would have never let him do so much had he been getting royalties on all yeah, that. Probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why does Sal Busema keep coming up on the books? Get him out of here. <laughs> Twenty thousand dollar check to Sal Busema. What is going on? Yeah. What is happening here? All right, man. I am. Uh, I'm. I'm getting the crappy watercolors out. <laughs> to do it. So. Yeah. Blame it on the supplies. <laughs> it won't save you. No. Hey. I, uh, <laughs> hey, I You're doomed. Home, I brought it home with that Turok piece. I'm gonna manage this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of getting the hang of them now. I, I uh, use it as a good base. I just start with it, and then I'll go in with, you know. Expensive. Oh, see, he suckers me into getting the crappy water. Uh -huh. not <laughs> Aaron, uh, before you start, I think there's a Kevin Thomas chat that that you would be interested in reading. All right, hang on a second. Get your cannonball ready. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Is that good? Uh, I no, so. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, Kevin Thomas, Ben saying this for a while now. Wraith versus Shanu. Work it out with Nolan. Heck, I already came up with a working story. Aaron can draw all the snow he wants. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's right. Can you imagine us fighting over, uh, you know, splitting up the money on something like that? Jeez. Is there going to be like a crossover at some point with some of you guys? That's a good question. I don't know if. See, the problem is I think you have to get to a point where you don't have any more ideas and you start going, oh, maybe we should cross over because yeah. I can't do what I want to do with my own characters. And that's, you know. Yeah, I don't uh, think anybody's running out of ideas. It's like running out of time is the biggest issue. Everybody's got so many ideas. So if, yeah, that's, if that's the criteria for doing crossovers, then, yeah, I don't know. We'll be waiting a while. Geek View, Geek View Tavern. That's a new name to me. Geek View Tavern that's, says that's uh, that's Dave Ulbrich. Really? Hey. Yeah. Okay. He says, "Hooray! Crappy watercolors." <laughs> You're welcome. Hey, Dave. Geek View Tavern. Yeah, Dave has a show called Geek View Tavern. It's really good on YouTube. If you guys have not checked it out, uh, do so. Okay, uh, I will do. I'm gonna hold on a second. Let me write that down. View Tavern. They drink drink beer and uh, talk yeah. about comics. Yeah, Dave Wilbur, yeah. Tom Mason, our good buddies from the Malibu. <laughs> Bless you, good lord. Sorry, thank you. Your soul came out with that one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Not a body experience. Uh, like Your soul is all over the page. Yeah. <laughs> Your soul. They're gonna wipe it up. <laughs> uh, hey, speaking of, uh, I, I don't know, I, said, I guess souls maybe. Um, I'm gonna go see the last voyage of the Demeter tonight. Yeah, that's oh. someone, in the, someone in the chat is asking about that. Yeah, I want to see that. Hold on a second. I'm gonna not just say someone. Let me say who their name is. What they should have done is combined the that's Nicholas the Cage. Is asking. Justice, I was asking if uh, they should have combined the Nicolas Cage one with that and had him. Yeah, that would have been great. <laughs> but Andy did a review of it and 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 he liked it. Yeah, that's what he called me right after he saw it. And he said, "Dude, you got to go see this. It's good." I'm like, hmm. I don't go see it anyway. It's not getting great reviews. <laughs> Andy told me to go see it, and he's like, "It's great." So. I'm gonna go see it anyway, but <laughs> well, I, meant, I, meant I was gonna go see it regardless. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> I usually don't listen to Andy. I was Despite gonna, you know, what Andy says. Hey, <laughs> talk me into it. That's kind of what I'm saying. But I, I was reading bad. It's getting. Well, I should say bad reviews with mediocre reviews. Texas Mofo doesn't like the ending. Okay, I, you mm. know. 
playing and, and, yeah they they said the ending was uh questionable but he still recommended it. Don't, bro, don't bro i've got my own i've got my own uh, philosophy on how they're going to end it and uh but if i if i put it out there people are going to start saying no it ended like this and ruin it for me so i'm not going to tell you, you know. david have you have you seen it yet what i wasn't even listening what what <laughs> are we doing a show what what'd you say <laughs> seeing what Get out what of are here. you doing I was shuffling through some papers. What are you talking about? <laughs> the last voyage of the Demeter. No, not yet. I'm going tonight. That's what we were talking. Oh. When you've got something important to tell me, just... <laughs> See, now yeah. he's like, what are you guys bothering me for? I'm, like, <laughs> here. I'm busy. Oh, jeez. <clears throat> David, I'll stick up for you despite the trash talk that Aaron and, and Kelsey do behind your back. <laughs> okay, I appreciate it. Thank you. <clears throat> have you found any more hobo uh, Aaron pictures online? I, yeah, I I have something in the hopper, but I'm not going to share it this week. Okay. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> when he was, was you got the one where he was smoking crack. <laughs> it was a gay pride parade. I'm I'm well, still deciding. <laughs> Slow down, big fella. Slow down now. Um, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so he was smoking crack. <laughs> if I had to choose between the two, I'll take the crack. Um, <laughs> um, um, Gary is like Fred McMurray in the Kane Mutiny. He's always like behind everybody going, yeah, I got your back, man. I got your back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't remember Fred McMurray in the Kane Mutiny. Yeah, he's the one that was talking uh, Ben Johnson into uh, mutinying against um, uh, Humphrey Bogart, but then testified against him in the trial because he didn't want that, to stick his neck out. Van Johnson, I can't, I can't think of that name without laughing at the Seinfeld episode where Jerry was like, I don't know, like oh, the Van Burens. <laughs> he was dressing up or something, oh. and his mom is like, "Who do you think you are, Van Johnson?" <laughs> it's like what? What an obscure reference. Yeah, but that's from her generation, so it makes sense. I thought you were going to talk about the Van Burens that gay oh, yeah, yeah, kids the there who were like all into the presidents or something. But still, in his day, Van Johnson was a hunk. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. Yeah. So, who do you think you are, Kelsey? Van Johnson? <laughs> No, Kelsey, it's like, who do you think? Van you Halen. <laughs> that's, all, that's all right, Kelsey. Kelsey. You, you are Murphy Anderson? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah Jerry Anderson or whatever. Yeah. That's all right, Kelsey. Despite what Aaron and David say behind your back, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> Jerry, yeah, I can't even think of his name now. Um, Craig Thompson. Or no, no that's yeah. the blankets guy. Craig, who was it again? Murphy Anderson. No, Murphy. the other guy, the guy from Batman, the one I was trying to remember earlier, the chat guy. <laughs> Angela, you're going to have to wait. Yeah, I'm making ladies wait. Yeah. Yeah. Please show it, Gary. Show what? Yeah, I gotta pace myself. It's not. It's not finished. That, that's the pimp game in here. You yeah. have to wait. Yeah. Yeah. George Lacour says uh, Dan Halen. So I don't know. Is that the... Van Malen? Van Malen. Van Malen. <laughs> or Dan Halen. Norrin Dad ha Dad Halen. Yeah. Norrin Rad the second Turbo. That's a very specific. What? My, you know, for his chat name, Norn oh. Rad the Second Turbo. So it's Norn Rad the Second on crack? No. <laughs> I don't know. He's what been around a while. There's been many, uh, many uh, versions. Energy drink? Hmm? I'm lost. I have no I idea what happened. What happened? At this point. Except that we have uh, nine minutes to go. Well, we'll round up to 10 for easy math because I'll give you a little bit of time. 
to get some red in here. <laughs> <laughs> red yet, so I'm a little nervous. I, yeah. I forgot one of the. Thank you for reminding me. I forgot You're one of the. Playing around with um, rocks too much. Just hurry up and slap that gray on there. Yeah, That's but I, I give it a texture, man. It, He's do that cool. after. Okay, hold on a second. Norn Rad clears it up. Norn Rad the second Turbo says it's his love for Silver Surfer and Street Fighter Two Turbo. Nice. That good combo. Oh, I thought it was Turbo from uh, Breaking. Turbo Turbo Teen. Oh no. no, what did you say? I thought it was Turbo from Breaking. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was the other? It was Turbo <laughs> and uh, Turbo was and Electric Boogaloo. Remember that? Laser one? or yeah. something? What was this? That's what, what was I'm the talking other? about. Well, there was Breaking, and then there was Breaking Two Electric Boogaloo. I don't know. Same, same, guy. same guy, same person, uh, same character. <laughs> I never watched either of those movies. I'm just saying, I, you know, love the title. Quit lying. We know you're like breaking. You're in your life. kitchen trying to do like pop it back spins and flares and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Up rocking. <laughs> I was like, I went and saw Car Wash and then like Mother Jugs and Speed, things like that. Mother hey, Jugs and Speed. <laughs> you know who did? You know who wrote Car Wash? Uh, somebody famous. I can't remember. Oh, no, Joel, Joel Schumacher. Did. Joel Schumacher. Oh. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah, so the talented. guy who ruined Batman. But he's so funny talented. Favorite, so I shouldn't say that. Um, yeah, yeah, I like one of those he did. I like the one. Aaron, that... I'd like to have been in the room when you're trying to convince your mom that you're you're going to see Mother Jugs and Speed because you're a fan of Speed. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it was a Bill Cosby movie, so I could always go on. Right. <laughs> yeah, he's so wholesome. Well, he wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> was yeah, he wasn't. And Harvey Cattell. When I was a kid, I saw, uh, I went to a truck and tractor pull uh, here in Louisiana. <laughs> Hold on a they, second. Time out. When you were a kid, what, you're talking about last week? No, 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 no. I'm talking about the one I went to when I was a kid. The uh, okay. one I went to last week, that was a different one. <laughs> no, no, no. The, this one, they had a car, uh, I think it was an, I think it was an ambulance that was called, they called it Mother Jugs and Speed. And I, I'm not. Did it have yeah. the, like, the big tires and everything? Yeah, it like, it opened up, it like shot fire. It, they, it really? had like a giant engine in it. And I had never seen the movie. So like, I I don't know if that's related to the movie at all, but it was killer, well, mother, man. Mother Jugs and uh, I, uh, J Mother was the uh, was uh, Bill Cosby, and he was like the the guy who sent people out on their calls. Oh. And and, and Harvey Cattell and Ra Ra Raquel Welch were like the ambulance duo. Oh, that's right. Raquel Welch was in that. I forgot. Oh, yeah. Raquel Welch was in a lot of odd films. She made a lot of odd choices. Well, you know. She wasn't really in any blockbusters. It was all in these kind of funky movies. You know, she was also, you remember that movie um, oh, geez, what the, it's one of the 50 worst films of all time. Um, Plan 9? No. Uh, I, I got the Raiders. No, she was in it with Rex Reed. The spirit. Um, oh, jeez. I'm going to get the book. Hang on a second. They only got five minutes to go, and I'm getting the book. I mean, Gone with the wind. That, anything that Frank Miller directed? No. <laughs> <laughs> he only did one. Spirit. Right? Yeah. <coughs> oh, I can't find it. And, I like that movie. Anyway, it was like Rex Reed, you know, the film critic? Yeah. He played this gay guy. I know it's a shocker. And then he was like a transvestite, and when he became a woman, he was Raquel Welch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the yeah, dream, but, isn't it? Yeah, that's the genius dream. Genius surgeon <laughs> there. Oh, I bet see, we we were seeing how he saw himself. Yeah, I guess. Um, and of course, it's you like know. Shallow Howl from the old, you know. Start slapping some red in there and quit playing around. One million. No, no, no. Keep playing around. One no. million BC. That's another, you know, odd choice for her. Yeah. Well, she didn't want to do the movie, but they, uh, 
who was it that produced that? Some schlockmeister and said, if you do this, you're going to be a superstar. And so she did it. They made yeah, her do let's it. make a poster. Was that Corman? And, well, she did. That made, her, that made her a superstar, despite the fact that it was, you know, not the greatest movie in the world. But, hey, I'll watch it. So you got, <laughs> hey, I didn't know cave women were that, you know. Hot. What? Oh, it's hot? Back, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, go back to the old caveman days. Aaron, what's the clock situation? Just don't worry about it. I'm just gonna do <laughs> <laughs> don't get off my back about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm run out when I get the red on. Okay? What, do you mean, what do you mean, don't worry about it? Did you detect panic in my voice? <laughs> Aaron, the clock! <laughs> For God's sake, you're, you're all constantly teaming up to sabotage me. That won't happen. <laughs> I won't have it. This will not stand. About it. <laughs> I think you should use red and not pink. Oh. You, know, you should actually do something besides sit there and uh, criticize. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, uh, I yeah. could downshift and still whoop your ass. <laughs> well, a lot of talk. I'm not seeing much action, though. <laughs> I see you barking, little doggy. Yeah. Do you bite? <laughs> oh, my goodness. How much time we got? Oh, we still got three minutes. Plenty of time. Seven David. minutes, really. David's almost time. done coloring. You really got through that fast today. I'm surprised, Kelsey. You were you came on a <laughs> Wait till you see it up close. It looks like trash. <laughs> That's the benefit of zooming out on these pictures. They look it looks great on my monitor. Yeah, exactly. It's all kind of soft and blurry. It looks <laughs> yeah, wait until you see the Muppet face and the, the weird dangly bits. The yeah, the, the junk hanging out. And the... <laughs> yeah, it's random, there. Random task in the chat says, Aaron is so sensitive when he's working in pink. <laughs> I reflect the color. Um, just in that head. Very, very sensitive. I'm trying to find his pants here so I get them right. Is it red on the outside and then white on the inside? You don't have time for this. Just make it up. Okay. <laughs> we'll count it off for you later. Got two minutes here. So, uh... Thank you, Marcus, for, for sharing links in the chat. Actually, we really have like more like seven minutes because we started it. Uh, oh, now we have seven minutes. The time is increasing in Aaron's right? world. It increases. No, we want to be. We're just trying to be accurate. The people expect. <laughs> it's like when you're sitting in math class and you're watching the clock, and the clock starts going backward. <laughs> <laughs> Except when you're taking a test, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh! Like oh, we got five minutes left. This does look pink, but it's red on. Oh, what is the problem with my red in my camera, man? If I, if it's, if it's not orange, it's pink. It's like this is red. I'm telling you guys, that's a cheap red. It represents as pink. <laughs> yeah, you should but, use ink. You should try ink. A nice yeah. vivid red. Aaron, the red is on the inside of the leg. You. <laughs> 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 but if it is, I'll just use acrylics and fix it. So, unfortunately, I can't quite fix it right here. You forgot his wings. What? I don't know. <laughs> hey, you could have looked at that. Did you say like, what about his wheels? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, his wheels, too. He's got wheels, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, they're, 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 they're tank treads. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Hey, you that did that all wrong. Yeah. Yeah. You got a rocket pack. I would too. ride the motorcycle. Where's this motorcycle? <laughs> oh my god. That's why I never wanted to draw ghost riders. Like I did not want to draw that motorcycle. Uh doesn't small price a, to pay for greatness. That would have been awesome. Doesn't he have a like open face deck of cards in this costume too? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're thinking of Jack oh, that's true. Hearts. That's a character I would never want to draw either. Jeez. You don't want to work for a living, do you? 
Not really. No, I want, <laughs> I want to do jungle comics, and that's it. Aaron, you realize if there's white in his costume, you have to put a background color so, so it looks like, you know, you just didn't, forgot to do it. I, I just. You do good I, work, Gary. I'm Doing not. Good. <laughs> I don't appreciate what's going on here. <laughs> <laughs> I feel as though I'm not being treated fairly. <laughs> uh, I really thought I'd be done with this like 30 minutes ago. I don't know. Did you guys put me off on a tangent or something? I can't remember what happened. Now it's, it's all a blur. Eric uh, N. Boyd is laying down some, some movie knowledge. He says, uh, replying to Paul Taylor, I soon learned that he did, oh man, it's scrolling. Soon learned that he did a lot of not only vampire and horror movies, but also did three cave girl films, One Million Years BC, Creatures That Time Forgot, and When Dinosaurs Ruled the Earth. Who's he talking about? Yeah, we never narrowed it down. Is it, is it um, uh, what's his name? Um, it wasn't Castle. It wasn't William Castle. Who was that who did that post movie? I said it earlier, wasn't it? Uh, Corman, Roger Corman. Oh, was it Corman? I don't think it was. Corman. We're talking no. about Hammer, Hammer films. Oh, Hammer. Oh. Okay, yeah. But I know oh. there's a specific producer that, like, sort of told her she had to do it and trusted it, and she'd be a star when she did that. And uh, she ah, did that. Aaron. Yeah. Super chat. Oh, see, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, leg kick for two dollars. You're disqualified, Lopresti. Start over. <laughs> um, uh, you should have done the tank treads. Here you go. <laughs> You're disqualified, leg kick. Damn. <laughs> you are disqualified. Yeah. <laughs> That'll do Consider it. Consider it a disqualification. <laughs> 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 All right, are we done with this already? Yeah, we're waiting on on the the host. What? What time is it? Oh, we went over by a minute or two. <laughs> I'm not sure I can uh, keep this going. This is already perfect. I might ruin it. That's my plan. That's yeah. <laughs> I'm almost done. I'm like David. I'm almost done. Oh, like, he gave what are you up. About? I'm done. I painted lights into mine. He gave yeah. up a long time ago. <laughs> I love it. I love it when David like turns on colored lights to add, you know, uh, his unfinished drawing. Uh, ah. You never tried these paints with the with the light effects? What are you talking about? Yeah, it's part of his art form. His uh, that's right. He's like he's a, yeah, one man effect. show of uh, yeah, art and bull. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Well, I guess I guess that's enough. Kelsey, you're done, right? Oh yeah, I'm just currently trying to ruin it. Uh, you give me some more time. I'll, I'll make sure of it. I help you ruin it. I gave him the smoothest crotch I think I've ever drawn. Um, <laughs> not really sure what's going on there. Yeah, see that that's what I was thinking, Kelsey. Boy. That crotch is really smooth. <laughs> it goes down smooth. Oh, crap. Oh. <laughs> hey, I heard what I was saying at the moment it was oh, coming no. out of my damn mouth. Oh, <laughs> you, wait, you couldn't reel it. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's All right. right. <clears throat> okay. And uh, so we uh. shall call it uh, a game here. Um Eric Boyd says, how does it feel to know Kelsey always wins? Kelsey does not win because it's not a competition. It's not a competition, right. But it uh, feels good to me. Thanks. Paul Taylor <laughs> says, gross. I think I finished eating. Um, okay. Creative Faye, that will be clipped. No, I'm not motivated <laughs> to clip it. Um, <laughs> all right. Here we go. Oh, wait, I got some little highlight on here. Hang on. Oh, yeah, hang on. Wait. It's almost there. I got time to start over, right? Yeah, um, yeah. Right. <laughs> Are you eating? No, yeah. 
eating okay. my cigarettes. No, I'm making a cigarette. Oh. Uh, gotta celebrate this victory. <laughs> the, the smoke. <laughs> He's all, ah, uh, don't touch me. Give me smoke. <laughs> Actually, I haven't looked at yours yet. I'm hoping, uh, I'm hoping it sucks. Okay. Here we go. This is what Rob would have got if he actually did hire me to be Captain America. Uh, <laughs> You're doing Captain America? No, that, that's a good one, Aaron. He brought that all back. Wow. Like, oh, the circle is complete. Yeah, here we go. Ooh. Boom. Wow. Wow. That rock, baby. I actually like that a lot. I yeah, <laughs> like it's kind of Virtually. it sounds like a bad kind of compliment. I yeah. actually think that's pretty good. Yeah, for a change. Let's see. Uh, I like the rock texture. Strong. Looks cool. Yeah. I'm gonna good, punch yeah. up the great, metal great a little bit too. Good metal. Yeah, the, see, that's what I brought to was kind of the uh, image pose. You know, it's not the image. Yeah, style. See, I, I, yeah. I wish you would have done that kind of pose and uh, posing in uh, Tachyon. Yeah. <laughs> Good, uh, he does have shoulder pads. I, I didn't yeah, but they're too small. See, that's the thing. Life uh, would make these freaking huge, and I didn't. I kind of made them all well, that's not the size they would normally be. See, did we I'm fail? Just, should we? We head. should have gone for broke. I think we held back. This is uh, our problem. We talked about this why he's so popular. Yep, and I still blew it. Yeah, what happened? I told <laughs> <it>. <laughs> No, I nah, just, that would have been great. That would have got my my attention if there was like a bad rock book like that. Yeah, it would have. It would totally would have got my attention. For yeah, sure. I would have bought it. I bought the other one. I think uh, I saw one that Jason Pearson did. I was like, "What?" Oh, that would have been cool. He did. It was great. So anyway, there you go. That's my contribution. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna put a little color in the background here before we call it completely done. But at least uh, at least that David was good just like that. Like right. yeah, you know, you know white background anything. looks great. Yeah. yeah. All right. You should um, take uh try those ink drops that David did, maybe. <laughs> 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 All right, check this out. Uh TS men, Tesman 74, 32 dollars confirmed. <laughs> Thirty-two uh, ninety-five, and you got a deal. <laughs> okay, exactly. All right, so let's take a look at Kelsey's here. Oh crap. Okay, um, yeah. So there you go. Gonna... <laughs> <laughs> there you go. He's got a, he's got a little guy on his knife over here with his eyeball on the on the tip there. Um, look at that! Look at that masterful clean artwork. <laughs> well, I want to see the smooth crotch. That's what oh, it, <laughs> you what? You nice smooth crotch happening right there. there. It is. Yeah, look at the work he put into that. Lovingly rendered. <laughs> yeah. Lovingly rendered. Yeah. I tried to get as many pouches as I am, but that's harder than it looks. I know. That you takes make skill to say, put. Is stuff. your button fly? <laughs> yeah, I should. Yeah, you should put flies around it. Maybe. Uh, Daniel Russell, thirty-three dollars and fifteen cents confirmed. Look yeah. Like look at know. his hair so big, I couldn't even get it in the piece. Yeah. It <laughs> goes out of the too much. <laughs> I gotta tell you, I really did enjoy drawing these giant uh, knee pads with the. <laughs> I see why the, I see why he does it. Is it fun? <laughs> Loving yeah, the terrible pouch. hand though. Yeah. Oh yeah, like yeah. See, the, it's not only the pouches. It's the pouch. It's the pouch and the pouches that make it work. The guy That's with right. the knee pads got some head. <laughs> hey now. What? No, head, right here. Oh, head. oh, I see. Okay. All right. So I want to make sure we're clear on that. Uh, Daniel Russell said, is that Aaron's head on the knife? What the? <laughs> yeah. Let's That's him see losing right there. Right. Well, actually, it's not that far off. The teeth are a little wrong, but other than that, it could be me. Uh, there you let's, go. Let's take a let's very nice, Kelsey, actually. Thank you. Uh, got a nice... Uh, hey. Little pat screen. on the head for me, thank you. <laughs> yeah, a little pat on the head. Good job, son. Good work. Thank you. Um, here we go. Let's take a look at uh, David Williams' uh, unfinished table drawing. Oh, nice layout. 
I know. <laughs> it's just seething with potential. Oh, that is cool, though. I see what you you are going for the Mignola version uh, with that, especially with that stance he's in. I like that face too, that kind of grimace he's got going on there. Yeah. And you can't go wrong with those those uh, what is it? Um, shin shin pouches. You got the shin pouches down. Yep. You gotta have. Uh, <laughs> I love those boots. Those things around his. Yeah, what, what are the those? shin pouches? Shin oh, pouches. Shin, okay, those are the pouches. Okay. You're missing knee pouches. And, um, um, <laughs> no, I'm yeah, it looks I cool. This is actually going to be pretty nice when you get it done. Yeah. If, yeah. Uh, if you get it done. I can almost imagine a finished version of this. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Close your eyes and concentrate really, really hard. You can say, wow, that could be really cool. Maybe someday we'll see it finished. Well, you can Mignola that up and just add lots of blacks. Oh, that's true. You should do that. Yeah. Just black it all out. That's right. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> <a silhouette. laughs> when all else fails, edge light it. That's right. <laughs> Geek yeah, very cool. says, pouches, sticks, no feet, very life filled. There you go. That's true. Mm -hmm. Although it's in the Mignola style, so that's very anti life filled, I think. That's, yeah, there, there's just some weird things converging here. Teeny head, a lot yeah. of teeth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I yeah. just noticed all the teeth. <laughs> oh, David G says, I'll award two points to each of you for no feet. Well, David's, well, actually, I got no feet either. Yeah, we did it, guys. We did it. We're all feetless, so we actually get – we're all – we just kind of a wash then. I guess there's no way to gain an advantage since none of us drew feet. I guess we all win. We're all yeah. feetless. Right. <laughs> we're Aaron, all winners. Aaron, here's something something that I whipped up under the table. Pardon me? What? Hey, what, now? what now? Is this okay. your smooth pouch? Okay. Let, oh. <laughs> what? What? Oh. Oh, Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, wait a minute. Wait. <laughs> it's like I'm in a whirlwind. Uh, oh, uh, uh. I'm puke. Oh, man. oh my I gosh. I, I got to get that book. Man. You're pick it, pissing me off. And I don't want to spend a hundred bucks, but I got to get it now. Uh, How much is it? It's 150. Actually, if you go on, uh, there's a couple on eBay right now for like 119. Ooh. And uh, you can get it on Amazon for Amazon. That's where I got mine. Yeah. So. Mm. It's sold out at uh, IDW, but they're 150 on the IDW site anyway. I wouldn't. Yeah, they're going out of business. I wouldn't trust them with my money anyway. Yeah. I'll go out and buy from Amazon. It's an yeah. excellent um, All right, gang, there you go. We are uh, pretty successful. Uh, you never know. You know, when the Life Elves name came up, I was a little nervous. I thought, uh, how is this going to turn out? But I, we, have some, we got like two really good pieces and one unfinished piece. But that's about par for the course, isn't it? With the. Uh, I guess I guess nobody's ever told you, Aaron. You're not bad. You're pretty good, man. Aaron, Howard Chaikin once told me uh, that I didn't suck. Yeah, yeah there you go. I was just going to say that. Go to bed knowing that you don't suck. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, in my opinion. I think that's I think... why Chaikin was disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> look out! Now. Okay, um, time to wrap it up. <laughs> sure David says something he's going to make us regret but, um, anyway uh thank you guys all for joining us this is the biggest audience we've had in a live chat so far for the show i hope it's not just because lightbulb's name is on it i hope it's because you love us so much you want to come back every week it's like uh, this is you've been watching graybeard studio we are every wednesday at one o'clock pacific time right here on this very station uh, if you guys have not yet, please hit the like and subscribe if you haven't. That would really be helpful as we grow this to uh, colossal proportions. Uh, but thank you guys for all the super like chats. A smooth pouch. Sorry. That's, and a smooth pouch. You always get a smooth pouch right here on uh, Great Nerd <laughs> Studio. But um, thank you all for joining us. We couldn't do it without you. And uh, we will see you next week. And it's Gary's turn to pick categories. So be looking for that poll on Monday on Twitter. Uh, until next time, we'll see you guys. Thank you. Spoilers.